Well, there goes the the. Oh, you do it. You do it. This is worth waiting for, folks. I didn't turn it on. That's right. Oh, you. Oh no. Oh, she popped the battery. <laughs> When we have we have a megaphone. Oh, there it goes. That's our screaming goat, of course. There goes the neighborhood. Good morning, everybody. I got a weird note here that Facebook stopped the thing. Can you check on your phone? I can, give me your phone. It says we're still streaming. It says we're still going. So if you could maybe just I make can, sure I we're still going. Your, I gotta go on your Facebook. Yeah. But if we are, and I'm hoping that we are, um, I mean, I can kind of check, and then I'll get some vocal feedback. Just, yeah, I know. So I don't want to do that. But we're here, live, on this Saturday morning. It is February. What, what is it? It's February 3rd, 2000. You know, and, honestly, David, I can't. Oh, I, I, don't worry. I think, we're, I think we're live now, which check. is, thank uh, goodness. Uh, so, yeah, just wanted to check that. I, I thought, can, when I go yeah. into your... Um, yeah. When I go into your account, it'll tell me. Like, if I figure out how to do it, it'll say. Yeah, but I, I loaded up Facebook, and it looks like we're okay. So I'm live! Yeah, yeah. Saturday, February 3rd, 2024, here yeah, with the 929th episode of The Day of Us Gone By, Facebookio, Podcastio, Programmio of the Stream, with me, Dave Lefkowitz. See, there's me turning 60 right there last week. And there's my darling, off camera, my darling and adorable wife, Joyce. And there's all of you in the neighborhood watching this program as you do every Saturday from nine until noonish or thereabouts. Or if you can't watch us live, of course, the archives are at Dave's, <clears throat> Dave's gone by com and on uh, archive.org. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You know Just, that they said you want to post a story. So I say share the story. Yeah. We're live. It's a yeah first Saturday of February. Punxsutawney Phil, um, who is around, and he's in Pennsylvania, so we're not tremendously far from him here in Maryland. But I don't know if you know this or follow this, that he saw or did not see his. He did the thing where it's supposed to be a shorter winter, even though winter is exactly from whatever it is, December twentieth oh, or twenty first. What does that mean? Yeah, I don't. It. it I mean. The weird mind fuck of the whole thing is that he's wrong, <laughs> or or Punxsutawney Phil is right. Is it really Punxsutawney Phil? I guess like, there's probably billions of Punxsutawney Phils. Yeah, they keep they find the groundhog, they name him Punxsutawney Phil, and because I don't know how long groundhogs live. Uh, I mean, how long would it? He lives uh, under things in the ground. We have one, we think, on our property, living under our backyard shed. Oh, there's me. No, but I, I shared it since James come by his live, and I shared it to you. I don't know. I, I, don't, know. I don't know where I shared it to, but I shared it to you. But here's the deal. What do you do about punks to Tony Phil? So he sees the thing that says it's not going to be six more weeks of winter. It will be five weeks and six more days of winter instead. And yet, he's apparently right only 40% of the time, which means that essentially – you have to count on the fact of there being at least six more weeks of winter because Punk's Tony Phil is wrong more often than he's right. This is why our country's going to hell, folks, because you, can, you can't trust or know any. If you can't trust a groundhog to tell you the weather accurately, you know, whom else can you trust? What else I can you do? I don't know. Um, what is the history of the groundhog? Why don't, I'm going to look at the yeah, please. Can, 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 because why would we trust a groundhog to predict weather? It's like asking, going out and saying well, to, um, you know, our little thing that lives under the shed, like, could you give me some financial advice? Like, no, if hold on. Like, if you see birds or, or yeah. other flora, deer, and thing reacting in a weird way, and then a storm so comes up. What's the tiny fill the groundhog to predict weather? You can tell by their behavior that, uh-oh, there's, there's some unsettled activity that even... We as humans can't oh, tell yet. Oh, yeah, it says Germans yeah. added yeah. to the tradition by selecting an animal to help predict the weather. Uh huh. But it wasn't the groundhog that was used; it was a hedgehog. That's why we have trouble because we're using. Uh, we should be using a hedgehog yes. day. It says after coming to America, German settlers in Pennsylvania continued the tradition, but had to switch from 
hedgehog to groundhogs because groundhogs are more plentiful. So that's the problem. We're using the wrong we're species. Using the wrong diviner, yeah. In oh, Nazi Germany, they would take Jews to, to predict lightning storms. Oh, oh, no, making what? his prediction? Yeah. Oh, Let, let's, oh, oh, Lord. What, what, what? He's a groundhog. He's cute. I, would not, I like animals, but even only they're cute. Yeah, she doesn't like the groundhog that lives under our shed. I think he's a dog. We call him Fiddle Faddle because he kind of plods along like this. But Joyce just has a, she's not a, a groundhog fan, apparently. Yeah. So, so this was apparently Punxsutawney Phil, our Pennsylvania groundhog, because all the different states and, and regions have their own groundhogs or uh, hedgehogs, if, if you will. I think people just don't want to hold a hedgehog because as, groundhogs can bite you, but hedgehogs just is one giant sharp quill. I can't get it. Oh, oh it's all right. It's okay. Um, anyway, so... I'll try on my phone. I will, I'll get you a picture at least, so you can do. Yeah, some we don't know what, what punk, well. We don't know what this year's punks Tony Phil. Like. Yeah. Punks the Tony Phil twenty twenty four. Yeah, let's let's give him a look. Aww. See, well, she's making a, a an air face. Because he doesn't do the right job. I well, mean, Look at him. He's there. Yeah, looking. let me see. Let Let's me see. go under the shed and see. He's adorable. But, you know, he can't even predict the... It's like David, he has one job the whole year, well, just to predict the, the winter, and he can't do that successfully. He might. It's probably he, union. But he could. Tr he has one job. Can't he practice? Yeah. Like, can't he practice with, like, weather events and then see, like... Well, you sort of can't. I mean, he can say, oh, I think there's going to be rain. And within three to five you, days, you he'll be could, right. You could say anything. There's going to be sun, rain. <laughs> he doesn't even know anything. He's terrible. He doesn't even predict nothing. He's, he's, yeah, he's not. He's laughing. <laughs> and he don't even predict nothing. Well, look him holding him up like this. Oh, is it? yeah. Let me, let me see. Oh, come on. David, he's a failure. He can't predict one job. <laughs> <laughs> his one job is to predict the computer. Maybe it's this guy. His his job is to find a groundhog who can do his the job. His job is to wear the hat and grow the beard. Yeah, all right, he did that well. He did that yeah. well. But he's middle management. He's the one and who's supposed to yeah, pick. Kind of, yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't, that's. If you don't have good staff, it doesn't even, matter. Is he a boy? I don't, I, it could You're be a Phyllis. Are you visiting Puxatani? But why would I want to visit him? Are you kidding me? You wouldn't want to be part, you saw the movie. You wouldn't want to be part of that experience in, uh, shall we say, Gobbler's Knob. There's controversy. Is Puxatoni Phil active? There's a no, whole, there's a he's not. Thing. No, that's what they're saying. He left his burrow. He did not see his shadow. Uh -huh. Thousands of people descended on Gobbler's Knob in Puxatoni, Pennsylvania. <laughs> I wonder who invented that one. Oh, wait, this is what, the first gay it said, settler. It yeah. said that he um, did the weather prediction with the help of his inner circle. Really? I think it's Masons. <laughs> I think it's Freemasons. Oh. It said it's not what he feels, it's his shadow, but. Right. But how do we know if a groundhog does or doesn't his, even see him? They don't even name the handler. So you know it's bad. <laughs> you know it's a scam when they don't even name the guy wearing the beard. No, the guy in the top hat is like, I'll do it. Yeah, but, but don't I, name me. It says his handler. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, Alan Smithy. Just call me Alan Smithy, and yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do it, but don't. Yeah, Apparently, I don't want to be associated. Said, like, okay. What? They said that, yeah, just with the accuracy rate over time. For 40%, time, right? 39%. 39%. That's worse than chance. Chance would be 50 50. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> we, why not, why not they, what, let's get, they should do like a groundhog and a hedgehog and see who's better. Yeah, or a, any other animal. Yeah. Any other, there's probably worms. Toxitani's fill. Oh, no. Uh-oh, uh what? 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 What the hell is That's that? That's his ex-wife. <laughs> I'm hoping this is an artist's <laughs> rendering. What's his ex-wife? She lives in Florida. Look what it says. Yeah, okay. She lives in Florida and said that Phil is a compulsive <laughs> wife. That's really cute. She, she, she's a cute. I, and she eating a donut and coffee with donut, her hair coffee, rollers. Got the, I love it. The powdered sugar oh, yeah, on her left. Of yeah, And the curlers, of I course. I love it. That's, that's pretty great. I love it. Oh, man. Anywho. So happy, perhaps... 
six more weeks or less than six more weeks or slightly more than six more weeks of winter to ya. Uh, hey, we made it through January. That's the toughest month. And, you know, if you're in a northern climb. If you're in Florida, if you're in Arizona, you don't give a shit. But if you're in New York, Maine, New Hampshire, places like that, uh, Minnesota, Detroit, Oh, no. The difference between six weeks and five and a half weeks is probably a, a, a thing. What is, are, is this? It's a meme. Here's a meme that says, hey, <laughs> did you hear that Punxsutawney Phil came <coughs> out of his burrow, saw his shadow, and then was scr- scratched to death by Gus, the second most famous groundhog in Pennsylvania? Well, you know, Phil got the job. He gets all the love. He gets the endorsements. Right? Yeah. yeah. Anywho. But, yeah, th- that's the thing. January just feels like forever. Because they load in. Oh, look ju- at yeah, this one. Yeah. I'm looking for a Punxsutawney Phil type of work schedule. Once a year. I know, yeah, right? I cool. know. Yeah, that's a good job. That is a great job. My gosh. Um, oh. Well, actually, the Nathan's Hot Dog people. Everyone's <laughs> oh, that's, this is cute. This is cute. <laughs> this one is one worth- said I lied, but this one's funny. I'm a rodent. No. I'm a meteorologist. <laughs> <coughs> but no, I'm going to talk about <clears throat> January because we made it through, folks. December, yeah. they load in with all the holidays. You got Hanukkah, you have Christmas, you've got people decorating all their houses with lights, you've got all this feelings uh, stuff, and and so it oh, takes your mind. Honey, honey. Yeah. Why are wood, woodchucks such bad drivers? Why? Because they're road hogs. Yeah, they hog the road. They hog the road. Knock yes. knock. Who's there? Abby. Abby who? Abby Groundhog Day. That's terrible. I'm not making it up. I'm reading. Okay. I know. Knock, I know. knock. Who's there? Teddy. Teddy who? Teddy is Groundhog Day. Okay, more. What, no, is, it, what no. is the Groundhog's favorite drink? What is the Groundhog's favorite drink? I don't know. Whole milk. All right, okay. I get it. All right, knock, all right. Knock. Who's there? Sia. See the singer? Sia who? Sia in the spring. Uh, that's a, what is Sia? Oh, Sia like this. Yeah. Knock, knock. Who's there? Jewel. Jewel really loved this holiday. Yeah. Jewel will be happy to know there will be an early spring. That's cute. Are there are there more of these? These are a groundhog joke for children, I believe. For children. Okay. <laughs> for children There's with the serious They dip. like the jewel knock, knock joke. Yeah. All right. Any, any, any others? Uh, it doesn't say. What's a groundhog's favorite color, but it doesn't give the answer? Really? Yeah. Groundhog? Oh, brown, maybe, yeah. Oh, what was that a, supposed to be a joke? Um, How much ground would a groundhog grind if a groundhog could grind ground? That's it, yeah. It's not really a joke at this point. Now we're moving into tongue twisters. Oh, and here's a confession of the Kahiki confessed. Uh, this is cute. This is... This is... <laughs> It was actually a meme that was taken from Donald Trump, actually. It's just, I lied. There you Is go. There, you, you know, uh, why are we using a groundhog if we're supposed to use a hedgehog? That's disturbing to me. It, it, well, we see groundhogs. I've never seen a wild hedgehog running around these parts. Yeah, but we, I'm sure they exist. Okay. Well, of course, they, one, one of your students had a groundhog back in... No, she had a hedgehog. I had a hedgehog back in Colorado. Yeah, she, she did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah she, it was cute. We okay, had one around the office. 170 groundhog Dave jokes. No, wait, wait, wait. 170 groundhogs. Oh, day? God. What yeah. do you call a groundhog on top of a hill? What do you call a groundhog on top of a hill? A mound hog. That's cute. That one, a mound hog. I like oh, this. Oh, people are making... Somebody made... Oh, Lord in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> groundhog. I do have to... That. This I have to show. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, well, if there's room for batteries and something, and I, I don't even, uh, I can't even. No, let, I'm going to hold this up for a moment because they look cute, though. They are, they're adorable. Look at the little, the little tails, honey. Yeah, the little beaver tail. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Except they're not, they should be groundhogs, not beavers. They, well, the people are so confused because it should be a hedgehog. So. Or, or that's a groundhog that goes into a beaver, but I don't know what that means. I have no idea what that means. The thing about Groundhog Day jokes is you tell them 
and then you have to tell them over and over and over and over again. And, I and hate really when these, these stupid people make you click again for stuff. I don't want to click. I know. I know. Oh, that's the joke. Does anyone know a good groundhog joke? I keep hearing the same ones over, over and literally. Over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we did that one. We did that one. You, know, you pretty much have a lot of jokes. Abby, Teddy. Yeah. Jewel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mount Hog. Yeah. And I like Mount Hog. Handwriting? They're analyzing the handwriting? Wait, what? I don't know. They're analyzing the handwriting of groundhogs? What? This is scary. Yeah, this is terrifying me now. <clears throat> what, what were they writing? I don't know. It's very bizarre. A bit. A bit. Why do we trust a robot? True. Well, again, because... Why do we do experiments on animals before we try things on humans? Because we watch them and we say, oh, you know, that mouse is going blind if we put mascara on its eye. This Probably better it's change mascara. Day when Pucks yeah. Tony Phil sticks his head out of the ground and tells people, okay, people, it's really time to take down the Christmas decorations. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> He's cute. I feel sad for him, though. Why do you feel sad for him? Because he can't do his job. It's not, like they, it's not like they eat him. It's not like turkeys on Thanksgiving. Funny one line. All right, here we go, yeah. Give me the same one over and over again. Because it's Groundhog Day. <laughs> or oh, was. I'm not clicking through. They always want you to click through. It's so wrong. I know. Does anyone know any good Reddit? Does anyone know any good Reddit? Good ground. I haven't heard no. a good one yet. Um, Groundhog puns? <gasps> yes, try one, please. They're, they're not really good. It's the uh, same ones we just did, the whole uh, milk and all. It's got nothing to do with, you could do those words with anything. It has nothing to do with groundhog. Jewel have a happy groundhog. What, what the hell is that? I don't know what it, yeah. clean groundhog day joke. Oh, oh, please, yes, because oh, the dirty oh, ones. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Uh, oh, here we go. Okay, what's the groundhog's favorite color? We were wondering about this, so it's not brown. It uh, is, a, well, kind of brown, brown. another name. Tan, dun, I give up. Mahogany, like groundhog. Oh, that's, yeah. Why do puppies celebrate? What do puppies celebrate on February second? Ground Dog Day. Yes. Yeah, all right, man. Yeah. What do you call a woodchuck? A ch- what do you call a woodchuck with no legs? This, this is the clean kids. one. This is, this is the cl- a woodchuck with no legs. <laughs> you call them chip. Le- uh, I give up. What? A groundhog. Yeah. Uh. Why did Puxatani Phil leave his home on February second? This doesn't make sense to me. Why did he leave his home on February 2nd? Because he third, third, he third it would be grandma. I give up. He needed to buy some Valentine's Day cards. What? That's fucking <laughs> idiotic. <laughs> what uh, what the, the hell? The Mason. They, no. they get better. Do they? They get better, yes. Why did the groundhog, what did the groundhog say when the wolf grabbed his tail? Ouch. That's the end of me. Cute. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's cute. What, does, what happens if a groundskeeper sees his shadow? Six more weeks of, of hoeing? Un- mowing? Untrimmed hedges. How do wood ch- woodchucks greet their parents? How do woodchucks greet their parents? <laughs> no, no, how, how, how? With hogs and kisses. Um, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Why was the groundhog upset about his home? It, it was a whole mess. He was having a bad lair day. That's cute. Okay. A bad lair day. Uh-huh. Yes. That gets knock, a yes knock. from Dave. Knock, yeah. Knock. Who's there? Howie. How we doing? How? What? How we much wood can a woodchuck chuck? Ch- no, yeah. no, no. What do you call a fake woodchuck story? Uh oh, I, I found uh, I a lot up. of hogwash. Mm. What do groundhogs put on pancake? Pancakes. What do groundhogs, hold on, put on pancakes? I give up. Hog cap and syrup. How do groundhogs smell? Terrible. No, they smell just like everyone else with their noses. Their noses, yeah, of course. What's green and jumps out of a hole on February 2nd? (laughs) My penis. No, what? The ground frog. Oh, that's all right. No. Why should you never share a bed with a woodchuck? This is he'll, for kids. Because he'll do something to your wood? No, because he'll hog the covers. Oh, that's all right. That's okay, good. what do you get when you cross a groundhog with a peanut? This is horrible. A, 
ground shell of support. Now I give up. An animal whose nuts about predicting the start of spring. Terrible. Oh, oh God. Terrible. Yeah. What song was the number one hit for Groundhog Elvis? Hold it. All right. Hold it. <laughs> what song was the number one hit? Groundhog for... Elvis. Groundhog Elvis. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, jail. Uh, love. Love. Love me timber. No, a hound. A hound hog. A hound hog. You ain't nothing but. Oh yeah, yeah. I get it. I I get it. Yeah. Uh, knock, knock, who's there? Who's there? No, you, you, you no, I'm knock, supposed to say, knock. who's there? Pun. Pun who? Puxatani Phil. Oh, Puxatani, yeah. Okay. yeah. Why is it annoying to watch TV with Puxatani Phil? You know, because he knows the future. He'll predict the, the game. He hogs the remote. He hogs the remote. Yeah, all right, fine. What do you call a woodchuck laundromat? I give up. A hogwash. <laughs> I should just speak hog and put it to something, right? Yeah. yeah. I should be getting these at this point. Oh, okay. For those of you who haven't been throwing up, where we're do watching ill game. groundhogs go? Where, where, where what? Ill, sick groundhogs. Where to the hog spittle. Yeah, I got, I'm getting it now, yeah. What do you call a groundhog who drives in the center of the road? Road hog. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, there's two more. Oh, well, thank Why God. Why was Phil kicked off the Puxatani soccer team? Hogging the ball. Yes. Yeah. What? Did Peppermint Patty ask Charlie Brown when she needed to start a campfire? What did Peppermint Patty ask, ask Charlie, Charlie Brown, Brown when they needed to start mm -hmm. a campfire? Wood wood chuck on logs on fire. Where's the wood, comma chuck? Where's the wood chuck? Is that the last one? Yes, yeah, that's the last one. Is that the last one? I'm sorry, it's the last one, yes. It's, these are, I feel like Karnak. It's like, I have in my hand the these last are envelope. These groundhog jokes for children. Yeah. Well, no, they were clean. Even the one in the bed was clean. Yeah, yeah, they the were one, The one with the no legs was sick. Knock, knock, who's there? Pun, punks, a tiny film. It's, it's not like, that wasn't... Yeah, no, that one got because it's punks, a tiny, but that's terrible. I know. There wasn't much uh, creativity in no, it. No, no, a couple of... of um, Grimy teenagers knock on the door. Yeah. Knock, knock. Who's there? Punks. Punks who? Punks with Tommy oh, Phil. It's Groundhog Day. I like that. That's, that's good. bad too, but better. Better. Ever since we lost the dad, the, the dad calendar is sad. I know. Yeah. 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 Anywho, so what was I even to? Oh, I was talking about we got through <laughs> January. <laughs> We made it through the 31, because January feels so long compared to December, because it it's darker, it's colder, it's 30, well, well December's also 31 days, but there's no holidays in there except Martin Luther King Day, yeah. and that one's, you know, black, so it's, it's, it's also dark, uh, and there's nothing, right? Or what else is in, Festivus Valentine's is in December. Day, Valentine's Day? That's Feb. January? For, yeah, January has nothing except MLK. It used there. to have Lincoln or, or President's Day, I think. Or is that in February, too? Oh. But the one thing that gets me through the oh. the cold, barren months of January oh. is if you were watching last week, you know that on January 23rd, that was my 60th birthday. Uh, as you can see, Joyce put, if you look at the decorations from the last couple of weeks, you'll see Joyce made this big collage that she put on the wall in the back of, for the show. And then she created um, from the cutouts that she made, from, from the photographs she took and then the collage she made of them, she made a curio box, a memorial, God, not a memorial, a, no, it's a, curious, a it's memory a way, thing. It's a way to, um, to memorialize an event. You know, like people put all sorts of things. Like when it, it's a way to make a 3D Remembrance, yeah, I don't know if picture. you had this when you were growing up and, and visiting Jewish kids or something. Yeah. But when I had my bar mitzvah, well, my, oh. my cohorts had their bar mitzvahs, they did a thing called a memory glass, which oh, was really? the most disgusting thing ever. You take one of the glasses from the catering hall at the bar mitzvah, and you fill it with, like, water, and then you start throwing in candles, a, you know, not lit, a oh, picture. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and then you seal the top of it with wax so that it stays forever. So I have this thing in my House? bedroom cabinet oh, nice. upstairs for years. And you would look at it, and under the wax, you could see like mold growing. Oh, Lord. And the water there was must green. Be a way to... Yeah, it was. It, it was... I hope this doesn't get moldy. 
because the, the supposedly the wax is supposed to seal the glass and keep everything nice for years and it years. Doesn't and it doesn't. It. Yeah, it doesn't really seal it. So you just see your bar mitzvah and your history just getting darker and uglier. And I think at one time the thing just fell off the thing and smashed open and leaked. I'm sure everything. That happens to everybody. Yeah. Huh? I, I wonder if anybody, anybody who's my age or even a bit younger still has their bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah memory glass intact. I would love to actually see that. I wonder if anybody even remembers these things. But this is more likely to last um, through my life and onto my, my dad. Here is Joyce's, she put this together, this is sweet, using um, one of the photos that she took, a uh, bit of art stuff, of, you know, 60, cut that out from, from printing on the web. And then the I candle. Made that. I made that. Yeah. I put the, you, didn't, you don't normally wear that crown or have that stuff next to you. I put those mm -hmm. images next yeah. to you. I only wear the crown when I teach. Um, oh, okay. And then the number six, uh, this is actually a wax candle that was on my Carvel cake, my 60th birthday Carvel cake. And here, this is the, com oops, sorry, the companion piece. That's a different picture, see? Different and picture. It has the cone, and the cone for Virginia says, what does it say? They both have the same sign. They both say, no, no, but Virginia, it took me 60 years no, no, to look this good. No, but the cone on oh. Virginia, let me see. Yeah, I can't read it. Hold on. Oh, sorry, honey, I can't read it before there. It says... <clears throat> Oh, caution, 60th birthday zone. Because, you know, they, we went to Virginia, and we passed millions of cones, so. Because Virginia is, is forever under construction. Yeah. So there you go. This is a nice, so I'm sorry about the. the if, yeah. if your candles fall off, I have more single-sided tape. Sometimes the weight of the candle will pull. Right. I tried to put enough single-sided tape, but I may have to retape your candles. So oh, don't that's feel, okay. Don't feel bad if your candles fall. But anyway, thank you to Joyce for creating this, this lovely memento of... My uh, my big six zero, which which is a very nice six zero, I, I, very mellow. You know, I, I talked about it last week. Did I, did I mention everything? I'm not sure what else to to say. I'm sixty. I feel I feel like me. I feel like forty. You know, I feel like probably thirty, except maybe not quite as much energy. I get tucked through out. I like naps during the day whenever I can get one. You know, I've gotten to that age, uh, or or as Latin Wayne Wright sang, I, I daddy take a nap sometimes. You know. Three, four, five o'clock in the afternoon, which is probably later than I should take them. Old Dave just was like, you know what? I'm not really concentrating on what I'm reading or working on, and I'm or I'm sitting here and I'm just kind of falling asleep on my chair. I'm just gonna crawl in for 20, 25 minutes for, and then two hours later, Joyce is like, Dave, you better get up. And just, are you going to sleep for the night? I'm like, no, 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 I'm, no, I'm, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. Yeah. yeah. Like, I just want to sleep for a little bit. Then I go to like, honey, honey, I try to wake you, but I don't want to scare you because we will jolt up. Right. So now I go, ding, 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 ding. You, did you show the bell? You didn't show the bell. Where's your bell? Oh, I, it must be in here somewhere. Oh. Uh, if it's not, it's not. But I, I thought we brought the bell. Office. Really? Why I would the bell be in my office? Oh, maybe I put it in my drawer. You put, okay. Because I got a bell. That's new, honey. I dig it. Oh, I got it for the quiz. Yes, you got it for the quiz. I haven't explained yet, by the way, that... On this 929th episode of Dave's Gone By, what we're going to do on the show. So we have our Today Yesterday trivia quiz. We, we used to do these every week. We don't really have time to do them now every single week. But it's back, and we have some special guests with us. Our beloved David Sheward and Leslie Hoban Blake. They are both theater critics. Vicki Quaddy, who is an actress and uh, writer and co-created Late Night Catechism, which she still performs and tours with out of Chicago and environs. And we have our old friend, former educator uh, and, and poet. Do you won't see the bell? Don Pearl. He's not, the bell's not in any of my drawers? Let me check my drawers here. She found it. Oh, okay. There it is. Um, so they're going to be playing our Today Yesterday trivia quiz, which you can play along with at home. There we go. Ding, ding, ding. We'll also have Bunyan Watch, and, and how can you miss Bunyan Watch? My, my Bunyan is actually oh, shaped like this. You want to show the, the you know, we, the, you showed the bad sock already? No, I haven't gotten to the oh, sock yet. Oh, okay. Let me tell the folks what is on the show. Okay. Uh, we'll also go to our Greeley Times. In fact, we'll do that in a couple of minutes, where we go to Greeley, Colorado, where Joyce and I lived for several years. And um, the newspaper there collects 
phone calls, the, the transcripts of phone calls that come in from people to the local police department being scared of something that's happening in the neighborhood. And it's public record. They strip the identifiers out and the funniest phone calls go into the newspaper once a week and we take the funniest of the funniest and share them with you in really, really times. And last but certainly not least, least as it were, oh, two things. Our Colorado Limerick of the Damned, we, we are going to Edwards, Colorado, and it was not easy to write a limerick about Edwards, Colorado. Try it. Try it yourself. And, and most of all, we will have with us in the neighborhood a, a comic actress and, and don't run away from your screens, ladies and gentlemen, a ventriloquist. Yes. She has a friend. Uh, well, she, I don't know if she's bringing a friend. It might just oh, be. Oh, she better. I, Potato I wants buddy. Wants to do with you, like yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Potato has heard about Monkey. Yeah. Who is the right arm, if you will, sometimes, of actress and comedian Nina Conti. Now, Nina Conti is the. Um, I, I I I had never heard of her, and then I saw her in uh, <clears throat> a TV show that was done about nine or ten years ago on one of the cable networks called Family Tree. It was kind of okay. It was about this guy who kind of a bit of a sad sack and you know, dealing with his family. And I think he has to go back to Ireland or England or somewhere like that. It's been a while since I've seen it. But the most memorable thing is his cousin or his sister is played by Nina Conti. And she's very introverted and kind of weird and eccentric. And the only way she can communicate with people is through the monkey puppet on her hand. And it's, it's really the funniest character. It's, it's kind of the, the the real bright spot of the show. It's a smart show. And it's it not... seems like she just has that one puppet. Like she doesn't have copies. I think she has one or two others, but this is the oh, go-to oh, one. Okay. And it has become her... Like... You, you know how when we watch the show Pointless... Oh, no, not, no, not Pointless, sorry. Um, Would I Lie to You on BritBox. Oh, and they bring out an... Uh, well, and they have Lee Mack. Yeah, Lee yeah. Mack, who, who, who has just... He's so unbelievably quick. He's a, he's a comedian uh, in England. And there's something about his one-liners and his, his comebacks mm -hmm. where in the time even a smart, funny person would take to formulate a comic response, he's already said it. There's something about how he does that. Like, I don't know how. It, Nina Conti does that With through puppet? her puppet. Oh. It's, it's, it, and it's is he, literally. Is puppet neat or nice? Pick of both. Okay. It's monkey. It, it's just, it's not, monkey. Say, like, he's not just like rude to people or nice. Like he's just he's, he's just not saying, Don Rickles, no, but he's no, also no, not okay. a sweetheart either. Okay. He's not like like, like terrorist puppet that. He's, but he's not Jeff cutesy. Dunham. Cutesy. He's 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 a cute little monkey, but he's yeah no he's he's not. But he's also also psychoanalyzing her all the time that he's talking. Oh, they're they're oh, very nice. it's really really funny. She's really fast and and so she is going to be at the Soho Playhouse from, um, it was going to be tomorrow, they had canceled tomorrow's show, but they're, they're going to be there for the next two weeks. We'll, um, I'll ask you, but I, I'm on, I'm, I'm not going to tell why, but if she chooses to tell why, we'll tell why. If not, not. Can, um, you, can you just bend over? Right yeah, right? okay. Um, hold on one moment, please. Okay. Um, but she's fine. And anyway, so I, mean, I will ask her if she, if she wishes to, to say, but anyway, yeah, the, the show is still on, but she's not for tomorrow. And she's going to be at the Soho Playhouse on Van Damme Street. To be with, you, Potato wants to be on camera doing his part because well, he likes all animated objects. Well, the problem is I don't get to, to interview Nina Conti, who, by the way, also is, and I'm sure Rabbi, Rabbi Saul will bring this up, um, one Tony of the first actors. Tony Conti. Conti? That's the thing. Tony? One of the first actors that I idolized yeah. um, is well, a guy named, uh, oh, now I'm, hold on. Want me to look it up? Yeah. Tom. Tom Conti. Right. When I was a kid, going to college, on, or a little before then, on PBS TV, they showed a three-part TV version of Alan Eckborn's play, The Norman Conquests. And I absolutely fell in heterosexual man love with the performance of the lead actor playing Norman, which was um, Tom Conti, because he was so funny and he seemed, he was so me. He was like 
um, nebbishy, funny, Dustin Hoffman-y, which was always what I aspired to as an actor because I knew I was not going to be hired to be the Ryan Reynolds guy. I knew I don't have the height or the looks to be, oh my God, you know, the, the lead lead. Yeah. So I'm looking through, like, my sale ads, and look what they send me. Okay, this is apropos Yeah, I'm of, looking up, it's yeah. they're closing a Best Buy near us, so I just got to, like, You don't think AI is listening and yes. to everything we do? Yes. Uh, this, Joyce was not looking for this. No, they, they, this is like AI, um, like a sale on the store that's closing, and they're like, here are the products. And Somehow the Russians yeah. and the Chinese who are manning the satellites in the sky yeah. hear me talking about I'm monkey. Like, yeah. This is not what her monkey quite no, looks no, like. But, but, no, but yeah. I'm saying like, and, and why for, yeah. that's weird. Yeah. Because the most common animal for Valentine's Day is a little fuzzy bear. So that's also weird. That well, Russell Stober came up with a bear. I don't know if anybody else, most people do oh, Cupid or. Oh, Cupid angel. Or a dove or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But anywho, so Tom Conti who, you know, to the point where when I took my first acting class in college, or my, it was either an acting or directing, it was a directing class, mm -hmm. and I had, um, I came up and I did a scene from the Norman Conquests. I was trying to still be like the me version of Tom Conti instead of trying to be Norman, right? And, and the uh, teacher, the professor pointed that out. But that's the effect that he had on me wow. from that particular, well, and also it's a genius play. Uh, the Norman Conquest. Mm -hmm. But anyway, Tom Conti's daughter is Nina Conti. So it's six degrees of when I first was thinking about being an actor and a director uh, and a writer in oh, wow. when I was probably 10 or 11 years old. So there it is. And, and so this is going to be very, very cool yeah. to talk to her. Uh, and so what else? What else? So that's what's going to be on the show. Nina Conti with the one, the only, the Jewish Rabbi Saul Solomon. We're going to have Greeley Times. We're going to have Colorado Limerick of the Damned. We're going to have our Today, Yesterday trivia quiz. Pretty, pretty great stuff. So shall we, shall we do Greeley Times? It's wanting me to uninstall apps. Oh, on, on your phone? No, if you're not using them, get rid of them. So let's, let's go to Northern Colorado for Greeley we used to call it Greeley Crimes and Old Times because there were two different columns in the paper, one about things that happened 100 years ago and another about the calls that come into the police department. Unfortunately, the fellow who was doing 100 years ago, Mike Peters, passed away several months ago. But they do have um, a person there, Chris Bolin. I think that's a, a woman, not a, a guy, who has taken on... Chris Bolin? Chris B-O-L-I-N. Chris B-O-L-I-N, Green Trib. Page not found. Uh oh. Hmm. It's his role carrier with the United States Post Office. Oh, here he, I think it's a, it's a boy. It is a boy. Is that Chris Bolin? Oh, okay. Well, look. So thank know. you to Chris Bolin for keeping the column going. It's called, in the paper, they call it Cop Log. We call it Greeley. Hold on. I get this going here. Here's our music Greeley Times. <laughs> Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Grilly Times here on Dave's Gone By. So, hung, I, I see you have the phone. You've checked the phone lines. It's, it's working uh, this week. That's great. So, so far, so good. I can't guarantee anything. So, the, again, people call the police. <laughs> they get a dispatcher. Dispatcher has to take all this down. They're complaining now in New York that um, there was... Let do this. Look, wait. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, there we go. Oh, that they put through this this bill where every interaction a police person has with anybody has to be written down, and the New York Post is hollering that that's going to you know make much much more paperwork, and the police are going to have to do it. I'm like, you know, it, it's all it's a let them. There's always a paper put it trail. Dictate in their phone as a text message and send it to them. And then, yeah, and have somebody you know don't you don't even a human have some kind of uh, well, AI just write it out. Give everyone a body cam that can't be turned right. off, so then they can record everything. Yeah. 
like somebody asked for direction. Somebody asked me for directions. Yeah, yeah. Just in case they get sued by the guy who said, I asked for directions and he hit me. And it's like, no, I did not. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, every job has things and every job has requirements you have to do, right? And if that's not why, okay. I'm All right, here we go. A caller. A call. We have a call. Look at that. We have a caller on Bearwood Avenue. Talk about bears, right? Bearwood Avenue said that a suspicious man came to the door and blessed himself like he was about to do something bad. <laughs> what, why would that be bad? Wouldn't he be like... You would figure to, if like, somebody maybe, does... Yeah. Maybe he was like trying to... Maybe he was um, like somebody coming door to door. Why would he I do that? Bless me, Father, for I'm about to do something why really horrible. Bad? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they had history. They have oh, history. I wonder. They have yeah. history. And he's like, I know he's about to do something because I did something really bad to him last week. <laughs> a caller at an apartment building. Oh, did they send it? They may have sent the, the cops to the apartment building on 11th Avenue. Reported people looking inside cars and mooning people. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how you're doing one and then the I mean, other. You can't do both. Yeah. I mean, maybe they were going to the bathroom. Because usually, when you're mooning, if you roll down yeah. the window in a car and you go. I think they were going to the bathroom. Really? They weren't looking in a car. Oh. They were probably bending over. Oh my right? God. I, 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 anybody who does that kind of is a bunch of assholes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here all week. A caller. A caller. A caller. <laughs> on Ninth Avenue Court said that a man wearing a black coat and gray hoodie and carrying his shoes walked through the caller's yard. He then flipped her off and said, F you. The caller just thought it was strange. <laughs> he was the guy who was just blessed himself. <laughs> right, yeah. And the thing is, the caller thought it was strange. Not for Greeley. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Would you walk around like carrying your shoes? Well, okay, let's be honest. Yeah. There, I have sandals that I love, and I made the mistake of walking across a moist field with them, oh, like yeah. mud, yeah. and then you have to clean your shoes. So if you know that the field is muddy, I'd rather get my feet muddy because I can wash them more easily than my shoes. You but know? that means you have to walk home all the way barefoot because your feet are covered with oh, mud. You can't well, no, you could then walk in another yard that has like a hose in and clean yourself or like a dog that you should clean your feet. Yeah. You know, but then you're putting wet feet into shoes. But then you dry it. You go to another yard and they have like laundry. <laughs> they have laundry out, and then you. But he was carrying a sweatshirt, so you wipe your feet with your sweatshirt. Oh. You know, it's a, you gotta be resourceful. We have to uh, just break here and, and tell what happened to us yesterday outside of the place where we usually shop for Joyce's organic. Oh. <laughs> so we're coming out of the, the store, and we, you know, Joyce buys, you know, some bag of mushrooms and some apples. And you, were, and, you were looking through the books too. Yeah, they have one of those birdhouse book things where you can leave a book, take yeah. a book, leave a book, take a book. So I'm like, you know, me want book, me wait, me take. You know, Joyce, do you want to see? Tells me you want to see the book. I said, go, yes, yes, me want book, and I, I go, we go looking for it. We joke about some of the books that are in there because one of them in this box where half the books are children's mm -hmm. books is like the whore's child. <laughs> With a crucifix on it. A lot, of, a lot it. of stuff about infertility. It was like, yeah, some of them having embryonic problems. And, and it was like, oh, we know what that family and was where's, looking where's at. Where's Waldo, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> and, and so we come back and they were joking about it. And this, this rather yeah, scary and looking. I also were carrying a large bag of bird seed. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> Which was visible. We didn't even have a bag. We were we just did, carrying but it. Was, it's a big yeah. bag of birdseed. You can pretty much see it. And there's this kid leaning on like a post or a parking meter. He works there. And he looks for the shit. Oh. He's, I think he's one of the workers who works in the, what their equivalent of the deli would be like. I've right, seen him in oh, the I deli. Oh. He's a worker. And I think I also see him in the main part of the store. So he's there a lot. We see him a lot. Oh, we see him a lot. Okay, because... Because he started leaning, looking really shaky, not like smoking or with, <laughs> with a pompadour or anything. He's a greaser. But he's kind of just giving us, he's giving us a, a, I'm like, you know, okay, you know, I'm just like protecting Joyce with my other you arm. You were, you were no. like, no, you're not. I was you pushing you towards him. Car. Yes, you're running to the car. Bye, honey. And, and he just comes at us and he's like, I want, what do you exactly say? He said, I want to be like you guys. I want to be like I you really guys. I want to be like you guys. I want to be like I you aspire. Guys. Yes, I aspire. That, that was, was the, the word. I aspire to be you too. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, 
Wow. It was such a great compliment. Yeah. You know, because we, we've been married, unsolicited, what is it, 26 years. Unsolicited. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we, we were minding our business, and I'm like, well, is he going to ask for money? What is this guy? Well, and also, it was like, it was nighttime, and, and it was cold, so we, I had sandals, so we were hurrying because we were cold. Yeah. I was mean, saying, like, you guys, I'm going to be like you two. I'm like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> it made my night. He was <laughs> awesome, yeah. <laughs> we see the kids a lot, you know, the yeah. kids at the... All right, now we have another call. Oh, wow, we have a caller. We do. A caller on 47th Avenue. Oh, 47th Avenue doesn't have their siren on. Oh, they fixed it. It's about time. Yeah. A uh, second neighbor was playing music so loud, it was, quote, <laughs> Whoa. Brass. Well, here's the music. Hold on. Oh, yeah, let's hear it. Yeah, that, that, so imagine playing that so loud, yeah. it, quote, was moving the caller's walls. Whoa. Uh, so the police said, let them play two more weeks and maybe your whole house will move down the block. <laughs> no. That's funny. Yeah, but you know how it's like, boom, boom, boom. You can't say that. No, 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 I made that. Oh, part. You made it, okay. But the idea of the walls, like, dunga, dunga, like on the cartoons, like, dunga, dunga, dunga. Um... Oh, we'll save that one. Let's do it elsewhere. Let's make sure we do because we generally get all these from Coplog in the Greeley Tribune. We got a little more light there, uh, but we'll also once or twice go somewhere away from Greeley. And this time we're not going far. This time we're just going about seventy minutes south of Greeley to Denver, Denver, Colorado, okay. or elsewhere. Okay. And this is kind of cool. It's kind of sweet. This is this is a fun one. The paternity <laughs> of a baby orangutan born at the Denver Zoo. Okay, so this is and this is recent. This is just from you know two or three weeks ago, I guess. So at the Denver Zoo, a baby orangutan was born, and its paternity was a mystery to the staff. So, you know, I oh, guess the orangutan who, yeah, who's, yeah, who's yeah, diddling the orangutan yeah. lady. So they went to a paternity test expert. Oh, they went to Mori Povich? <laughs> they did? They went to Mori Povich! <laughs> um, Povich, who is himself the father of three, yeah. is best known for his tabloid talk show that revealed paternity tests yeah. to surprise guests. The segment usually ended with Povich saying either, you are not the father, yeah. or you are the father. Yeah. Was... Or this, not <laughs> so now you got Siska the orangutan. Oh, is four months old. Was she on the show with the baby? On the month, or, or in I video or something. Show, yeah. Well, Denver, they could probably, yeah, oh, bring yeah. it. Four months old, but it was unclear who her father was. I mean, this was not on the show, by the way. This is, they were doing this at the zoo and consulting with oh, that's Povich. Good, that's good. But was the father 30 year old Berani mm. or 16 year old Jaya? So wait, last, here we go, here we go, yeah. wait, wait. last month, the zoo <laughs> took to X, you know, Twitter, to say, quote, the DNA results are in. Yeah. And now we know, <clears throat> excuse me, who Siska's father is. Stay tuned tomorrow oh. for a special announcement from an extra special guest. Whoa. The next day, Maury Puppet <laughs> himself... <laughs> Who had just won a Daytime uh, Lifetime Achievement Emmy Award. Wow. He read out, quote, We want to thank the Denver Zoo for everything they do, but this is really important. Okay. When it comes to the orangutan. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I should probably should have shown this on YouTube. Uh, Four-month-old Siska Barani, you <gasps> are the father. Whoa. The 30-year-old, man. Wow. Yeah. So what happened? Did they have any? Like, usually then the men kind of yell or the women cry. Well, Jaya threw a chair. No, I oh, think. Oh, no. no. And then, well, maybe feces. But then, <laughs> then, then, like, usually there's, like, the audience, like, no, you didn't. And then family comes yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. All of whole <laughs> hordes of, of monkeys come to, oh, come to them monkeys. 
I've had this sitting your here for like two weeks your, already. Maybe your guest can provide some details. Before we even booked uh, Nia Conti on the show, I was like, oh my god, monkeys! Yeah. So, um, apparently, yeah. it, it, they all calmed down and, and they were very Thank happy. And I don't know if Barani's going to take real responsibility for the kid, if he's going to send checks, you know. Um, well, I think they all live at the zoo, so they're all kept by the, the zookeeper. So that's that's like a, it's like a family. I mean, they're fine. They're fine. Maybe we'll name the baby. Oh, yeah. Well, no, they've named it. What's and, the baby? Uh, Gia? Wait, maybe not. Gia's the mom. Oh. Let me look it up. What? What's Siska. It? No, they named it Siska. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, yeah. So Siska now has a, a mommy and a daddy. Oh, this she is... actually has two daddies if she wants them. <laughs> Siska has two. <laughs> oh, there's weird things going on in the Ape One Kingdom. One mommy and two daddies. Yeah. Anywho. Okay, so that was our Elsewhere. Let's get back to some Greeley times mm -hmm. on Games Gone By. Uh, in Greeley, phone calls coming into the local Northern Colorado Police mm -hmm. Department. A caller! Oh, this is interesting. Sorry. You just mentioned this. Again, I love the symbiosis. I love the, uh, not random, but the accidental collision of things that are kind of the same. Uh, a caller on 28th Avenue uh, reported what appeared to be bloody clothing. Oh. What was it? Was not paper? Blood. Newspaper? No, it was clothing. Yeah. It, it, but it was not bloody clothing. No. Oh no. <laughs> it was determined to be fecal matter. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you have loved to be like the forensic Einstein on the police department who figured that one out? It's like, oh, let me take a look at it. No, doesn't smell like blood. <laughs> Looks, it could, it could be blood. It could be poop. <laughs> he, they actually, he didn't really, couldn't really make the determination <laughs> until he did the taste test. But yeah. <laughs> oh, that one's broken there. Hmm. Try that one, yeah. Oh, that one's really broken. Oh, dear. All our sound machines are... Because <laughs> actually the thing is, it makes sense in, in sort of a way. Because, you know, if you, if you are in some kind of thing, where you have blood-soaked clothing or whatever, I mean, you can, you know, it's just something you got hurt. Where was You're going to bring the clothing home. took it off? Um, a caller reported what appeared, he probably just saw a pile, saw bloody clothing oh, on where? the street. Oh, on the street. On the street, on 28th Avenue, the caller said. But the thing is, that's the thing. Bloody clothes are probably going to wear home. <laughs> Fecal-covered clothes. Well, two, two references. <laughs> One. Yeah. The people mooning before could have left those pants. That's right. And two, maybe you were performing Miracle of Long Johns. That, and, and making it more interactive. It's an immersive performance. <laughs> That's yeah. what would have made that a real hit. Yes. That's what would have yeah, brought yeah, my yeah, show yeah. to Broadway. Is so I've, I've actually eaten big meals all no, no, day. You should have just had like, you know how they, when they vomit, they have a hose? You could have had a scat hose that, you know, you use that. You do that. I had thought of that. Really? Yes. <laughs> I would have been like, wouldn't it be great to take this show to another level? Well, if, you, if you've never seen, by the way, you can go to YouTube and watch my one-man show, The Miracle of Long Johns, which is a true story of me in a theater having a very bad, bad moment and movement, if you will. Um, but, you know, I talk about it. I recreate it in a comical way. But I don't actually shit myself on stage. What if I could? What, ladies and gentlemen, if I could? No. No? Seriously? No. no. All right, well, anywho, um, so, so fecal matter clothes. Let's do one, or, one more mm -hmm. before we, we move on. I have only three bars on my, um, my Wi-Fi. That's, that's our, our Wi-Fi must be kind of hurting a little bit. I'm not I sure have, why. Uh... I'm hoping you're getting a good quality 
a, a fine quality product Why if you're watching you at do, home. Can you go on and I'm not gonna mess. Okay. I'm not no, gonna mess. You can just type in on a browser and say, uh, go on a Google browser and say, test my internet speed. Oh, remember when we used to do that every yeah. every bloody week? Test oh, it's in. internet speed. Oh, on Google. I mean, I'm doing it. I'm literally doing it right this second. Run speed test. Because <laughs> I was in another place using their. Oh. Oh, it's really good. Oh, good. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that's okay. good. I, I know why we have only a couple of you bars. Give, but if you give me your phone, I can check because I have your. Oh, okay. No, I'm good. I'm no, not... I have your Facebook on there. I can look oh. and see what it looks like. Yeah. See if I'm all blurry and if, if you can hear me. Well, Sorry. yeah. I can't hear you. I can't hear you because the volume is off. Thank you. Which is good. Leave it because otherwise it, it gets annoying feedback and stuff. Anywho, um, let's do one more really time before hopefully our. Yeah, I, I know. I know. I'm using hopefully grammatically incorrectly, before our guest Nina Conti comes in to talk to the great, the one, the only, the Jewish Rabbi Saul Solomon. Uh, let's see, a caller. Sure well, oh. sure the volume is off before. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Whoa. I'm going to do not disturb. You'll clear it later. Mm. Whoa. See, see how I look. Oh, the phone says no internet connection. We've been... Even last night, we were bouncing in and out of... Uh, oh, stuff. please please don't talk about our sex life on camera. No, no, not <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, there was a thing. I, it said, it like I lost... Off, and it says here you're offline, yeah. So, oh. I'm hoping we're online somewhere. You got internet mode, that's why. Oh, all right, okay. No, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, and you're getting, you've got stars and stuff. Uh, well, this is good. So I'm hoping that I'm not just doing this for me. Even if I if I happen to be, we'll save the show. Uh, well, there's me. Oh yeah, uh, and and yes. Is, is it good? Looks it looks fine to me. Yeah, I, I literally just saw what I just did a moment ago, right now. So it seems that we're online, and I'm not just looking at this, but whether or not we oh, are. You got thumbs up. From whom? I can't tell, but uh, David is also another David just joined and is watching it. So. Well, welcome, David. Anywho. Chat. So somebody do one more grilly time um, just to get us towards 10 o'clock and, and the, I shouldn't, I, I, actually I haven't checked my, my mail today. We did confirm our guest well, earlier I'll yesterday. Check for you. I'll check for you. On uh, Gmail, it should be. Uh, I've gotten nothing new, so I'm, nothing I'm expecting, new. I'm hoping that we'll yeah, be in good shape. Anyway, a caller on 29th Street said that a man, and this is, I know why they call the cops on this, a man, man, ran the door, let me try this again. Rang the doorbell? Twice. <gasps> is that the guy who was blessing himself? <laughs> it was either that, or it was Fred McMurray or, or Jack Nicholson. Remember Ed McMahon when he used to do the, oh yeah, the, the, like what's your, if you won the. It was like, I rang twice. Uh, this is $40 million. They're not answering the door. Next house. You know, it's like, uh, so they, they call the cops maybe, <laughs> making sure it wasn't Ed McMahon. At the, actually, if Ed McMahon shows up at your door now, you do call the cops because he's that would be he's really he's terrifying. He's yeah. Anywho, it, that, that. It just said that was, you said man, man, ram, door. Yeah, <laughs> I, I couldn't get the words out. <laughs> that's what it said here. Ram, man, ram, ram, door. Baba Ram Das. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Greeley Times here oh, on Dave's Gummit. Oh, I'll Gummit. check your, um... Yeah, well... Uh, no, no, no. Mr. Horace Greeley was no fool. I'm sure that you agree with me that Greeley was no fool. But he is getting a little sex. Mr. Greeley was no fool. Yippee-yi. Yippee-yi, 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 yippee-yi. Yippee-yi. Yeah. Okay, so we got, just got a thumbs up from our guest who's going to be on the Today Yesterday trivia quiz. I gave him a little, I gave him the party icon. Cool, cool. And we should be having Leslie Hoban Blake and uh, David Sheward, as well as Vicky Quaddy playing our Today Yesterday trivia. How do you contact the guest through email? Yeah. Well, the, the guest's um, PR person. So I'm going to just drop. Yeah him a little bit of a reminder note that he confirmed yesterday and that we should 
be, I was just hoping that the guest has been trying, not having a trouble getting through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, as it were. I don't see anything in your email, but I don't know. Uh, hold on. Let's see if there's anything you sent. I don't see. I'm just going to drop him off very quick. Sometimes it takes people a yeah. minute or two to log on. That's what I'm worried about. I'm yeah. hoping that she doesn't have an issue or that um, I, I haven't sent the thing if she can't get through. She's on her phone. It'd be a password. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, oh, hold it. Hold it right there, ladies Yay. and gentlemen. So, Yay. my friends, we're going to have in a moment, first of all, someone extremely Jewish, the one, the only, the Jewish Rabbi Saul Solomon. And he, rather than I, will be doing the interview with the lovely and talented Nina Conti. You saw her in the TV show Family Tree. You can see her live uh, for the next couple of weeks at the Soho Playhouse on Van Damme Street, Doing not the monkey thing, actually, where she does a different kind of ventriloquism. She'll tell us about it, and she'll tell Rabbi Saul about it, too. So let's bring in, without further ado or a don't, the, the, his royal Jewishness, the one, the only, Rabbi Saul Solomon. Shalom, my friends. Shalom to all of you from all of me. I am Rabbi Sol Solomon, founder and spiritual leader of Temple Sons of Bitches in Great Neck, New York. And how thrilled and delighted I am to be here on this Shabbos morning, February 3rd, 2024, to chat with a very delightful, funny, quick and sharp lady, I am also teasing this out a little bit because we invited her into the Zoom room, but uh, we're waiting and we're waiting, and I hope she didn't, we didn't lose her. Please come back if you want to away. Now I have to vamp. Dum, dum, de dum, de dum, da dum, ba dum, da. Oh, no, God, I can stop vamping. Ladies and gentlemen, coming into the neighborhood right this second, a, I admit, I'm sorry to say this, a non Jewess. But she is a comedian, she is a ventriloquist, and she is going to be at the Soho Playhouse on Van Dammit Street in Manhattan over the next couple of weeks doing her show. She is Nina Conti. She has, um, what else can I tell you? You saw her on the HBO series Family Tree, which was directed by Christopher Guest. And now one of the producers, or, or the producer of her show, off of Broadway is Michael McKean. Uh, he was Lenny from Lenny and Squiggy and Moish and, and Sal. And he was also in all those Christopher Guest films as well. So won't you please welcome to the neighborhood, Nina Conti Shalom, Nina. Hello, hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Yes, very well. Because I, I got worried. I checked your Facebook page earlier in the week, and you had to cancel one of the, uh, the, the shows this week. Are you feeling well? I I am in recovery from a little op, for nothing too bad. <laughs> nothing good, good. Did nothing too that? bad. Yeah. But it, it not you know I'm not I'm not stage fit, but I will be very soon. I think I'm probably five or six days away from being able to do my show at its top level. You know what I mean. Right. As, I've never been able to do my show at the top level. I'm always <laughs> in the middle to the, the bottom there. Um, so, well, so, but you're feeling okay. It's just you need a, a couple. So it's what, a very frenetic show, and it takes loads of it takes loads of breath and running around and picking up cables and I mean it's a real plate spinner. So, uh, yeah, I have to be I have to be well. So I had to postpone one show, which I hate doing. I loathed doing that, and I try never to do that. But I did have to. 
lose one. So what are the date, the current dates for when people can see the dating show, which is the, the name of the show that you're doing? They can see me in New York at the Soho Playhouse from the 11th. Uh, no, that's wrong. Sorry, it's from the, it, the 11th is when I'm flying. I'm there for the Wednesday after. So what does that mean? No, I, actually, I thought it was February 14th was your first show. 14th. Yes, it is. It's Valentine's Day. Right. I'm so starting on Valentine's canceled, Day. You didn't cancel that one. You canceled... No. Yeah. Oh, I canceled okay. tomorrow's. Yeah, yeah. Well, tomorrow you weren't going to be in New York. You're tomorrow or... No, or... in London I canceled oh. one. Is it relevant? Never mind. I uh, yes, we needn't worry about any cancellation. It's all happening. I'll nobody, be very well cares. in New York. Yeah, nobody yeah. gives a crap about anything. Like you know, you were the enemy two hundred and fifty years ago. You still sort of are. But anyway, about that. and welcome to. So we generally know those of us who know you um, from earlier years know that you generally have a, a monkey on your paw there. But this day you do. so don't have the monkey. You're doing so. I do. Oh yeah, I very much do. And I, I use the monkey and some masks, ventriloquist masks that I put on people. So, so is it, yeah. it's a dating show. I mean, no one's actually coming out of it with a good date. They're more likely to leave having had a good laugh, hopefully. But the um, the monkey interviews all the people in the audience and all of that sort of thing. And we um, and then we take people up. We only work with the willing uh, we avoid the overkeen, and uh, that's how we kind of gather. That's how we get a sense of who the audience wants to see the most. Interesting. So, have you been doing this kind of the mask work with audience for how many? Since when? Since like it might be about ten years. Oh, uh, yeah. I used to use a stooge. I used to be very scared of any improvisation. And I always had a script and I would pay a guy to come and uh, pretend he was well, in the audience. That, but, yeah, sorry. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm like busting my own story. But I did that for about a year until I couldn't get a stooge for one show. And I ended up with a real person. And it was just so much funnier uh, that I never looked back. Well, you are one of the things about you is that you are tremendously quick in terms of whether you've got the, you're going through the mask and talking through the person or, or whether you're talking through you monkey. Is this like, there's, do you have any filter at all or is it automatically brain mouth out and into the other voice? Yeah, it comes straight, uncensored, no gatekeeper on the brain. There's no time. Right. Um, but people say I'm quick. Anyone can be quick if you talk nonsense like I do. I mean, the most ridiculous things come out of my mouth. Uh, no, they're not. They're not crafted. They're not crafted. But lo and behold, it's a funny enough scenario that the whole thing seems funny. I mean, it's 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 so adorable. Somebody there with words coming out their mouth that they're not expecting. You know that nobody's. You love them. Well, let me ask you a question though. As someone who has offended people deeply daily, um, have you ever, because you have no filter, and I have a very tiny filter ever offended, like have people come after you after a show or, or said, oh, you know, you were funny up until, and then. Well, I don't go into harm. That's not my interest. So, so far not, no, it's. Um... I'm not just talking like, cause even, even before the mask with monkey and whatever, have, you know, you do interact yeah. with the audience long before you do that dating show scenario thing. You never, the, the brain just out and you know it's somehow never going to be offensive? I can't, somehow have managed to avoid uh, blame for anything. No, I don't think offensive comes naturally. I, I'm so grateful for anyone who's on stage with me that uh, I, I really love them and try to take care of them. However ridiculous it is what I'm making them say, it's not coming from a place of harm. And I think the the only thing I probably, unfortunately, was having a wife sound off about her husband that she, <laughs> she couldn't stand him and everything. But that was sadly true. And no one, I didn't know that. I thought I was safe there, but it, it was a little true. So that was the only time I think in 10 years. <laughs> All right, really uh, this, but you weren't me. Of course, you weren't meaning to cause harm. Uh, and with me, no. I take things. I don't care whether I harm people or not. But but anywho, that's just me. So let me ask you: Had the whole ventriloquism and, and stand-up comedy thing not worked out, you might, 
instead of being at the Soho Playhouse now, still be at the RSC playing like Goneril or, or, or Goneria for, for that matter. So, so you yeah. were spent like a year or two at the Royal Shakespeare Company, yeah? Tell I me. was, yes. Serious yeah. stuff. Yeah. What, what roles did you play and what was that like? Well, I I was playing Audrey uh, um, in As You Like It at the Royal Shakespeare Company, and she's a goat herd. She only has a few lines. She does a lot of suggestive stuff, churning milk with a milk churn. I wore buck teeth and big ass, and I, I kind of, it was a character. I was always oh. much more comfortable with characters. But I, it's funny, I... Um, I actually thought maybe Monkey should try a little Shakespeare. I was making a video the other day, which is going to be a long edit, so I haven't put it out yet. But Monkey was forcing his way through to be or not to be and trying to be as truthful as possible. And it's a wonderful speech. And it's a very difficult speech. And if you're trying to get a monkey to do it in all seriousness, it it takes some doing. It takes a while. But I did it in earnest. I don't know. That's on the way. So wait, wait, wait. <laughs> monkey is actually doing a serious version of to be or not to be, that is the question, whether it is nobler mm -hmm. or not. But, but he's not doing commentary on it? Or I it? am interrupting him if I think he's ever untruthful. And he got very cross with me for interrupting him. Uh, <laughs> but it was it was actually quite a serious <laughs> exchange between us. I, I find Monkey funnier when he's a, a deadly serious anyway. I mean, I don't like him trying to be funny. He's He's, he's such a ridiculous thing. That when he's, I don't know, when he wants to be taken seriously, it's, it's more fun. Are you 100% mentally separate from Monkey? Or because there is that feeling, some of the videos that you put out and, and you did a documentary about your mentor and all that, of, of like, is, is Monkey also sort of therapy for it? Or you know, as soon as you put Monkey down, well, it's an act. It really is 100% an act. Or. Is it not a hundred percent act? It's a little more complicated, if I'm truly honest. I mean, I have been talking to him for twenty years, so after that length of time, you fall for your own illusion. Now, I don't think he's other than me. I don't think intellectually that he's real, or you know, I don't put him down gently. I drop him. I throw him in a bag. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm whatever. He is an object. Yet you, you play guitar with his face. I've seen you do that. Yes, so. I cheat him very badly like a kid would a favorite toy, but I wouldn't want somebody else to play their guitar with his face. Yeah. Like a child, I suppose. I'm, I'd be a bit like, yeah, very funny. Can you give it back? I'm not funny about him, but can you give him back right now is a little bit how I feel. I get that. I get, but after when you're done with him, it's like, oh, show's over, going out to eat, throwing a bag, boom, boom, boom. I'm Nina, I'm totally 100% Nina. Not 2% yeah. of you is not in that bag. Kind of, you know, like a Twilight Zone thing. No. No, no, not in the bag. Not in the bag. In the mind, I can go to what would Monkey say? Because often it's a bit sager than what Nina would come up with. So I do a little, I turn a tiny corner and a neuron or two and try and get into what he would say because it's a little bit like the higher mind or the lower. So it's when was things. the very first time, and I, I know we want to talk about the dating show and the, and the people mask, but when... People know you from Monkey. When did you first do the Monkey puppet? First in private and then in public where you brought it out, him out. Uh, it was in the year 2000, I I think, or maybe 1999, actually. My first show was in the year 2000. This is the Monkey here. Oh, I shouldn't show him without, you know, him being animate. But there was um there were there were several of them. Well, I hope so. Uh, I mean, if you treat them badly, you're going to need like 10 monkeys. On back up. Kind of like Elmo puppets. Yeah. Back up. Yeah. So I had learned ventriloquism as a favor to a brilliant director um, because he just thought I should give it a go. And I thought, please don't make me try that. I've never laughed at ventriloquism. It spooks me. And I find it like, oh, I find it You've just insulted errant. Jeff Dunham. You've just insulted uh, Fred Travely. <laughs> well, so, okay. I mean, I really did. I really. Uh, discovered it later that actually some ventriloquists have been brilliant and I just didn't know them. But at the time I thought, oh, so icky, ventriloquism. And then, uh, but I gave it a go because I was a bit scared of this guy. Um, so I gave it a go. And then I thought, well, maybe if I had that monkey that I just had lying around the house, I wonder if his mouth moves. It did move. I could get my hand up into his face if I pulled out all the stuffing. 
and I and turned his face to me and thought, good Lord, he's really looking at me. And then when I started doing the voice, it all felt like, well, actually, maybe there is something to be discovered here. It feels as if I'm able to think differently through him, which is refreshing because I was an agonizer. Really? Also, yeah. He allows you to have, the, as we say, the non-filter, to just, is that worrying anxiety is like, what he says is what you're really feeling immediately without having to go all storm and on it. There is less anxiety for sure, for sure, when the monkey is talking. And I, that is the weirdest thing. I, it must medically be very useful in some cases. I, wonder some what made, I recommend it. <laughs> what made the director think, because he might say, oh, you should do more comedy. Or he might say, hey, learn a foreign language. Or you know, so that goes on your resume or something. What would make him know or think that you could do with the which I can't yeah. yeah. Do, do you have any I think it was reluctance to be myself, I suppose, on stage. I was always looking for a weird hat or a wig or false teeth or there was something there was something I was trying to disguise and and it might have been to do with that, I think. Um I I'm glad he did, because it certainly wouldn't have occurred to me. What would I be doing? I mean I'd be dressed to the nines still hamming it up in the background of the RSC, not playing Juliet. No, no. well, at the, or, or as I said, maybe one of the three, not the three, well, one of the three sisters or one of the... the yeah, sisters, yeah, the all three of them I could play now as puppets. Well, let me ask you, um, one of the things that uh, Dave, the producer of this program, ha has mentioned is that when he was first wanting to be an actor and wanted to be a performer and, and things like that, one of his acting idols was seeing um, a PBS TV production of the great Alan Eckborn comedy, The Norman Conquests. And he oh, yes. just loved the guy playing Norman in this. Oh, story. my dad. Your father, Tom Conti. Hey, he's just, he yeah. wanted to be like Tom Conti. He wanted to, to, to do that role in The Norman Conquests. So, you know, seeing that just, he was so wonderful in it. So first of all, how, and, and people uh, might remember Tom Conti also from, oh, well, Shirley Valentine, he was in that movie and he was in, he was in Oppenheimer. He played Einstein. That was his most recent. I thing. haven't seen Oppenheimer, and I should because he was Jewish. I, I don't know why I missed it. But, but, <laughs> oh, but so let me ask you: He was in Oppenheimer. How is he? He's in his eighties now, I assume. How's he doing? He's doing good. He's very, very well. Uh, I made a video with him just the other day where he taught uh, taught monkey and I to talk monkey me my grammar or oh, he'd be cross about that um to cook uh, spaghetti napolitana and um yeah he, he speaks to monkey very very normally <laughs> he just he doesn't question these days well, when you oh i'm so sorry but when you were thinking of becoming a actress or some kind of performer was he one of those parents who said oh you must or was he like uh, no get a real job what what was his take? He always used to say, I I don't think uh, anyone, I wouldn't suggest anyone, if they weren't good, should go into this business, but I think you're good. But I think he was being nice because I don't think I was very good. I, I think I was very self-conscious. So it was um, very kind of him to say that, or very, I don't know. Maybe Either way, if, whether he meant it or not, this is your daughter. You're going to tell her. Yeah. You that... can't say don't. I think it's wrong to say don't. I think parents should just say do a lot. Hmm. Uh, well, I don't know. The parents of John Wayne Gacy, perhaps. Not, oh, you're English. You wouldn't know who that Yeah, was. maybe. But... Did he have him? Who knows? Yeah. Now, I, and this is not fair because, you know, we think, oh, the celebrity, the famous person. How's your mom? Because uh, he, he was married for a bit, or he is. I, is she, how's your mom? Before I say something. Well, she's doing a show as well. It's a showbiz family, like the Von Trapp. She's doing a show about um, Beryl Cook, the artist, in which she paints Beryl, one of Beryl Cook's paintings as her, whilst monologuing. Oh, um, and this is in England somewhere. This is this is this is happening in England. Yeah, this will be this year. She's going to take that out. So at the moment, the house of their house is full of the same painting. There's like forty of the same painting because she's practicing the painting right now. Of this other stuff, this artist's style is like a, yeah, yeah, like yeah. another Louise Nevelson. Right? Okay, I got it. That's that's so that's good. Cool. So your parents are still both performing 
and performative and, and obviously both very encouraging. This is, but was it weird growing up, uh, everybody gets asked this, in sort of a show busy family? I mean, there's a story you told somewhere else about, you know, oh, David Bowie came to dinner when you were, that, that sort of thing. How much of that was there? Yeah. I think there was a fair amount, actually. I mean, obviously, my, my dad, when he was making films, wasn't home a lot. So that was quite normal um, to me. And my mom and I were just at normal stuff. But we would visit him on set and then occasionally grand people would come around and it was um, always very exciting when they did. So it was very nice, I think. But it was also a, a little bit daunting because you... <laughs> he had to find a way to fit in to this this pretty cool crowd. I, I mean, it took me a while to speak at a dinner party. I was just sort of well, you, wider. I think you mentioned at one point you had this this incredible crush on David Bowie. You know, you were yeah, up. I mean, who didn't? Yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, I loved his music, but uh, basically, you, you know, I like girls. But I anyway. don't believe you. <laughs> Bowie! <laughs> Maybe, yeah, all right, all right, maybe, maybe a little you bit. You love him. But <laughs> so, so, but, um, so, but and being there, of course I couldn't speak. It's like, oh my God, it's, it's him, you know, and you had that. Well, I was eight or nine. I mean, my memory of it is probably a little bit fanciful anyway, but he, to me, seemed like a god. I mean, he had his blonde hair at the time. He was just a shining, beautiful It was the thing, thing I do, like a... what I tell you? <laughs> Do you have memories when we were younger or older of meeting people at the dinner table where we would go, oh, yeah, A-list actor, you know, like... Oh. Amazing, yes, I do. I have one, which I don't think I've ever talked about before, and it was John Candy came over, and he he was so funny and so loud. You know, he, he was John Candy. He wasn't being like a lesser version. It was the full John Candy and he had made a bunny out of a serviette and he was making it talk and oh, I'm a little bunny and doing all this stuff and he gave me $50 out of here take 50 he was a really like he was it's just an enormous personality and I laughed all night I was maybe 11 for that one I loved him oh my god so and was that just him or was that like tons of cocaine you were like no I'm kidding I, I doubt <laughs> I don't know what was going on. They were adults. I was a kid, but they were having a good time. Now, speaking um, of adults and kids, let's roll it forward a bit longer because you have a kid or you know, yes. a person just becoming a teenager at this point. You know, there was a picture behind your head. I wonder if that was one a drawing from your you know, the, the ink and charcoal or is that you drawing? I can't. Yeah, that's some charcoal. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's, uh, that's not a child's drawing. No, that's... Uh, that's my partner. He drew that. We went to a we went to a um, portraiture seminar and we gave it a go. Right. Oh, so you I know you had a, a new partner because you were um, you know people know from the documentary that your mentor was like the first big love and stuff and then then you were married and you have the kid which is my so yes. let's stick with the kid first and then we'll get to the partner partner person so. Be, and, and not only women get asked this question, but invariably women get asked this, what's it like having to be a performer and travel and schlep to like Soho, America, then back to Soho, London, while raising a teenage kid or even younger? Yeah, well, I'm taking one of my boys with me to New York. I think it's um, it's a guilt-ridden a little bit. I mean, whatever you do, it's a bit guilt-ridden. <laughs> the guilt doesn't serve you, though. I mean, you just have to keep... Keep it going. There are enough perks, I suppose, in the jobs so that the kids don't resent that. I don't seem to resent my work or anything. Um, I, I you, you just school. get by. You you hobble along. You, yeah. you borrow your mum whenever you can, and you you know it's 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 what it is. It's kind of an inexact science, but I have found it. I found it manageable. Just. Muscle. I mean, is there co-parenting with with the dad who's also a, a writer and performer kind of? Like yeah, that? yeah, he's great. Yeah, he he takes them. Yeah. So, how did you meet your current? What, was it through the dating game? Did he suddenly pull off the mask <laughs> and say, "Hey, you," you know, and instead of putting your your hand up a monkey's tush, put it up mine? I no, I don't know what that means, but but I know, I know. I'm sorry. I know. We'll leave that. Should we leave a silence? A nice long silence for that one. No. Yeah. All right. So so. <laughs> But how did you meet your current uh, beau, if you will? 
uh, in 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 the comedy world, he was um uh, he was one of the pajama men, uh, the uh, uh, comedy double act, and um, I met him in Melbourne at the comedy festival, and I was giving him the Barry Award, which I'd won the previous year. So I met him on stage handing over an award. Well, the <laughs> it was, was that funny. named for Barry Humphreys? Why was it the Barry Award? Or, or I don't know what. Yes, it was actually. It was Barry Humphreys. Cool. Yeah, who just passed a, a couple of months ago. So, so as an Australian yeah, did, yeah. comedians, and oh, it's just sort of passing down the award, and then you know, you're like, mm -hmm. hey, uh, you know, I'm giving you this, uh, give me something. Else. So, yay! How long have you been together? It was last year, right? Uh, five years now. Oh, McMuzzle McGlick. This. So, are you living together? Is he in Australia? You're in in UK, or? Uh, no, we live together. Yeah, yeah. McMuzzle yeah, McGlick. So can you this person, or or do you keep your personal life stum, except when when a monkey doesn't? Or, or yes, I don't. I don't talk about my personal life very much. No, it's it's it, it doesn't enter the show. No, the monkey and uh, I sort of live in a different world when we're on stage. Sure, absolutely. But let's talk about then in front of the camera, but also behind the camera in terms of doing Family Tree, which is where um, I guess a lot of people in America would have first seen you. And it was yeah. created by Christopher Guest, directed by Christopher Guest, whom we know from Best in Show and from A Mighty Wind, which is one of the great comedy films of all time. And, and so, so do you have any stories of making Family Tree with this genius comedy director? Oh, he's so, so wonderful to work with. He's, he's, he gives you such a long leash to do whatever you want. And it's quite alarming at the beginning because you really think, really, whatever I want, but I don't know what you want I want to know what you want and then he just says action and you think wait but but really we'll just speak yeah cameras are rolling and so you just speak and then you learn that that's all that you have to do but it was amazing to work with him and those others and Michael McKean and I mean they're they're so good at what they do they're not frenetic like an improv team who are taking suggestions from the audience and being all crazy they're calm and they leave each other space and it's beautiful. It's so beautifully done. And that's how you met Michael McKean, who is, I assume that's how you met Michael McKean, who is yes. producing your uh, show. Presenting, yes. Oh, presenting sorry. the show in New York. Yes. What's the difference between presenting and producing? What the hell does it? I, I think presenting, you go, ta-da. Producing, you book the theater, you make sure the post it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so I'm not should, doing that. I should be a presenter. I don't have the money to be a producer, but I should be a presenter. <laughs> I'm, I'm just buying people like, oh, this is Myron. He sells fish. Ta-da! And, and, and yeah, I exactly. You got it. Out. This is good. I should do that. Um, so I want to remind people also that from Valentine's Day through March 2nd, Nina Conti is going to be at the Soho Playhouse on Van Dam Street. I, I, it, it gets so confusing down on this. We just go, you can take the E train down to Spring Street and it's one block from the E. You don't know what the hell I'm talking about. This Spring is Street, yes, I know I'm listening. I've got to learn this myself. Spring Street, and, and it's literally, it's just one block away from the subway. You turn right, it's a Soho Playhouse. It's been around for, for a, a, a while and she is going to be doing this show called The Dating show so we you kind of explained it like you put ma <clears throat> excuse me masks on a person or two people and they don't even have to they you, they turn or whatever but you give them some direction but the voice is going to be yours is that the deal yes it's a jaw it's a jaw that opens and closes so it looks like their mouth and I, and it's strapped onto them god love them with Velcro straps at the back. And I, there's a cable attached to it, which I squeeze and open it once for every syllable. So I ventriloquize everything that they look like they're trying to say. And they use their body language to signal to me, yeses, nos, warmer, colder, sort of point out things. I misinterpret a lot. It's very difficult to get it right all the time. But my goal is to say what they want to say. And, um, Yes, it's glorious to try your hardest at that, you know? You think it would be fun to undermine it and just make them say just the most opposite thing, but you burn a bit fast and bright with that. It's best to try and get into their skin and try to make them say what you what they look like they want to. Yeah, it's like if you go for the joke immediately and they go or go for the obvious thing that isn't in character, it's fine. You get the yeah. laugh, 
And then a minute later, it's like, I've got no place to go. Whereas if exactly. you can build a bit, there's, there's a, a, a pair of um, uh, improv comedians who've been on this program. Oh, they're, it's not gonna com it's comic, but TJ and Dave, and they play at the Soho oh, Playhouse. Yeah. A couple of yes, years. they're very good. From Chicago, yeah. And they, they, you know, it's not like, oh, let's be, who's lying is it anyway? Funny, funny, funny. All that. It's more like, let's build a situation. You're a character, I'm a character. There will be laughs, but we can't just go for an obvious punchline. We have to kind of move you know, towards yeah, yeah, story. yeah. Like, yes, I mean, true. You have to kind of not lie. If you can imagine, I remember Stephen King said that about writing: don't lie. I mean, you're writing fiction, so everything's a lie anyway. But there's, there's something about you kind of know when you're lying, and it doesn't it doesn't wash. Well, before we we let you go, I, we we just have a couple of minutes left with with Nina. Conti here, whom we've been talking to, and you're okay. You're 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 doing all right. Because uh, yes, after this we have our trivia game that we'll play with Dave, who hosts the show, and then all the other you know, all the crap and nonsense that's on this episode. But we we want to uh, in doing that movie that you did, Her Master's Voice, where you talk about and quite literally bury the person who helped mentor who you are and and who was your your partner for for a while. Um, was that cathartic, or is there never really cathartic? It was something that you did, and you you get and you make a piece of art out of your life. But then mm -hmm. it, there isn't a catharsis. There's just kind of oh, I did that, but it doesn't end there. Hmm. I suppose it doesn't end. No, I mean for as long as I'm a ventriloquist, I'll be grateful to him. Um, and I, I often have the thought, what would Ken would like to see next? Because he's he was very inventive. Um, but uh, it was something. It was something to do that. And he was all for adventure, Ken. So it just seemed like the perfect adventure. And he left me all his puppets in his will. He was a hopeless ventriloquist, but he was an enthusiast. And I got all these weird looking things that all had faces and all seemed to be looking at me. And it all seemed to be wanting one last hurrah. So I took them to the ventriloquist convention in Kentucky and donated one to the Vent Haven Museum, which is a resting place for the puppets of dead ventriloquists, the spookiest place you can imagine, and and the sort of, sort of the most touching as well, because all these puppets never will speak again; they've all lost their voices. Um, but it was something. It felt like, yeah, I felt it felt like a good way to honor the guy. And and therefore, since you mentioned that, he's always asking or was asking, well, what's the next thing? What's the next step? Right. Um, for you, you've been doing the, the dating game for, you say, about 10 years and Monkey for since 1999. Are you, and if you don't want to talk about it as a creative person, I get that, but is there another kind of Nina Conti show in the offing? Well, I just directed my first feature film um, and uh, that's that's about to be screened in festivals and things like that, so um that's that was a hugely steep learning curve and it nearly killed me and I did all I could to retain control and make it the way I wanted to do and that was expensive and difficult and everything but I did hold on to that and I, I am thrilled with it you finished it's, uh, it you just finished it, it. I finished it and yeah. I like it and I don't care if anyone doesn't now I kind of like it, what, is it? I mean? what is the title what is it about it's called sunlight it's a love story between a man and a woman who doesn't want to come out of a monkey suit. Me. And it's... Oh, are you um, in it also? I, I'm in it. I, oh, I, did I directed it and I'm in it. And I was in a monkey suit too, so it was, uh, it, it was hot. <laughs> um, wow. But I wore my superhero. I was the monkey. And it was that, was, that was how I managed to do the whole thing. Yeah, you, you began, wow, wow. And this is going to be in festivals, and and you're still submitting. This year, it's traveling. Yes. Oh my God! Yeah. So everybody, be on the lookout. Do your IMDb page and see when it comes to festivals in in America Sunlight. and New York and places like that. Yes. Because we know England and Australia really don't count. We talk about them, but you know, and so but so. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have had the delight of talking with Nina Conti. Everybody, go see her at the Soho. Playhouse off off Broadway. It's over on Van Damme Street, and it's up here. It's not this week. It's you're going to wait until February 14th through March 2nd. So you have a, you know, about three weeks to see her. Well, oh yeah. 
Um, English people, I, I get you don't count, but remember, there's no show tomorrow if you got your tickets. Just just exchange them. She'll be back in a couple more days. But again, it is England, I guess. So, Nina, to, let, me, let me ask you just of, of all the things that you have learned being on stage at the RSC, being the thing with whether in a monkey suit or holding a monkey costume or, or squeezing bulbs with masks that make the jaws move. So what is, what is the one thing you've learned most about performance? It's so corny. Uh, I think it's love. I mean, I think you have to, I think you have to love the audience. Uh, that That's what makes the laughter. It That sounds super corny. But if you go there thinking, oh, they might not like me. Oh, they're going to be horrible tonight or any of that. It does not help. Um, you have to care for them. I think that really, because if you're not caring for them, then it's about you. Then it's there's no point in doing it. I think you've got to kind of honor honor the people that found their coats and their parking spaces or whatever they did to get there. You got got to honor it. Well, we honor Nina Conti. And we love Nina Conti for being with us in the neighborhood. And we wish you much, much great success with your movie as well as with your, your stage show that's in New York and all over the place. And we thank you for being with us in the neighborhood and shalom. You look like you've been through an ordeal here. You're just talking to me. I know that's a horrifying No, thing. I'm good. I'm smiling. I don't know what, what it seems but like. An like I, thank you. Thank you. No, no, no. Sorry. No, no. I was just shifting my chair. No, I'm very, very happy. Thank you so much for having me. And um, I can't wait to come to New York. Cannot wait. Well, we can't wait to have you. Well, I'm in Baltimore, doesn't matter. But, but the people in New York are very, very happy and delighted to see you. And we love you in the neighborhood. Shalom, Nina! Thank you! Bye-bye Nina Conti in the neighborhood, my friends, ladies and gentlemen. Go see her at the Soho Playhouse. In, starting on Valentine's Day and then running for three weeks. Obviously, she's funny. She's adorable. You've got to go see her. Well, me, I don't operate so much on love. You all, if, if you've seen Shalom Damek, An Evening with Me, either watching it from my, uh, my website, shalomdammit.com, or if you saw me back at the, the Richmond Shepherd or the, the Roy Arias Theaters, you know that it's, it's kind of a mix between love and hate. It's a thin line. Plus, you can see 10 episodes of the program that I did for Long Island Cable TV all those years ago called Shalom, Damn It, Rabbi Saul Solomon's Peace, Love, and Acid Reflux Hour. It's all there at shalomdammit.com. Well, damn it, I have to vacate this, this sacred space in the neighborhood and bring it back to the guy who created it, the producer of the show, Dave Lefkowitz, because he's got a quiz to do. He's got a stupid limerick poem that he's going to do. He's going to do what the hell else is he doing on the show? I don't know. Is there anything else in there? What else does he have to? No, that's pretty much it. But the quiz, the trivia quiz, is going to be happening now. So don't go away. I'm going to play some Jewish music. And you're going to stay right there for more of Dave's Gone By. Welcome back to the neighborhood. I'm Dave Lefkowitz. It is our 929th episode, and we are thrilled and delighted to be doing our weekly Today, Yesterday trivia quiz live on this February 3rd, 2024. So, um, let's see, let me get my notes here. Plus, we're, we're ready to admit into the hood our beloved friend from Chicago, Vicki Quaddy. She, um, she does Late Night Catechism. She does uh, Are You Smarter Than Your Eighth Grade Nun? And she is right here. Oh, your back, background is blurry. Interesting. I know. I'm actually getting ready to change it here. Hold on. Okay, I'll just close in, my eyes. Tell me when it's ready. No, it's just, uh, I'm thinking in honor of the upcoming, oh, that might be too much. Let's, let's, 
I don't know. I like kind of like it for Valentine's yeah. Day two weeks early, maybe for Valentine's. Well, nice. Well, I mean, you can I, be a little more, a bigger and higher against it. Oh, like if you angle the. That means I have to do this. There Hold you. on. What? My thing, my big fat fingers there instead. There. Yeah. Now, now we're talking. Now we're fine. Yes. Yes. Sweet no, sweet. I might. I might use a different. Well, while we're talking, I'll well, change while my background. David Seward, you can change your background. <laughs> David Seward, welcome. To the neighborhood, how are you, sir? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. David Seward is a uh, theater critic. He writes for theaterlife.com, culturaldaily.com, and of course, the great totaltheater.com, as well as having his own blog, The David Desk. So we're thrilled to have you. And yeah, David, I haven't had the chance to put your latest reviews on Total Theater. I will this weekend. It's just okay. school has started back up again. So old Dave's a little busy, but where are you? This is a different- I'm thing. in the living room. Usually I'm in the study, but this is the living room. Oh, oh, very, very well. It's it's nice to see the living room. So- can you uh, uh, And just so you know, uh, I had a leak in my sink. So I'm expecting my super to come at some point. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work around it. You got it was in your sink. That's all yeah. I have to say, you know. Well, all I'm saying is at our age is when you say, I had a leak. I, I had a very different idea of what was going yeah. on. Yeah, it was like two, TMI, oh, in the sink. Okay. In the, in the sink <laughs> is fine. We also have coming into the neighborhood our old friend, John Pearl, who oh. uh, Joyce and I knew from Colorado. He was in my writing group. Actually, even before that, when we I met him, he was teaching at the University of Northern Colorado, um, foreign language, actually, and I passed by his door and he seemed like a sweet old fellow, and he had like some Jewish things on the door. So I'm like, well, let me go talk to this guy. And we became, on a certain level, friends. And then he joined the writing group that I was in in, nice. in Greeley. And and uh, we've we kind of stayed friends ever since. So Don is going to be joining to play the quiz. Going to be. Very good. Leslie will be. There you are, Don. Don Pearl. <laughs> Welcome to you, Don. Thank you very much. How are you? How's it going? Oh, it's raining here today. Oh. I guess that doesn't deal with me at all. Well, God doesn't good. make it rain solely on you. I mean, it's yeah. probably raining everywhere in Greeley. And That's Georgia. right. I, I, very, I have a hard time drawing attention to myself, but I can say I like your shirt. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it has some sunbeams on it. And oh, um, <laughs> Wow, your eyes are failing. This is, this is just... Oh, uh, they are failing. The leaves flowers. And, yeah, flowers. Leaves. It's Beautiful. been failing for some time now. <laughs> well, our guest in the neighborhood just before you guys were on <laughs> is actress comedian was actress comedian Nina Conti, who often performs with a monkey. So I thought the the rabbi should have a monkey shirt that would appeal to a monkey. Oh, you have no idea what I'm talking yes. about. Yes, with a monkey. Yes, it captures the ambience, doesn't a, it? A monkey puppet. Oh, 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 not the group. Not the an sick. actual gorilla. No, she, she's going to be at the Soho Playhouse. Um, for three weeks towards the oh. end of the month. So go go see her. She's really, really very funny. Anyway, it is delightful to have Vicky Quaddy from Chicago, Don Pearl from Colorado, and uh, and David Seward from New York here to play the Today Yesterday Trivia Quiz. So let me give the... Don, it's been a while since you've played... There's Vicky, the, there's David. Uh-oh, what's the matter? It's been a year, hasn't it? <clears throat> you okay? Hasn't it been a year? Didn't I play a year ago? I think you played a but literally last February, it's been. Oh no! Is is, is David Super coming? No, um, not his, his sink is is back. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah. No, not yet. Okay. I'll be right there. Oh, there goes. Don is going to go fix your sink, David. I don't know how he's going. Right. <laughs> he's reaching over with a plunger. That's right. Uh huh. Um. So, it's based on things that happened either last week, like in the news, or things that happened in history. On this date, February 3rd, could be 50 years ago, 150 years ago, 500 years ago. And each question is worth two points if you get it right. If, however, you get it wrong, you don't lose any points, but another person gets to steal the question. Sure. So um, since folks are all here and Don is probably the least, the person who's been on this program the least, Don, sure. you have the honor of being the first one to decide what is a number between one and six that you like? Three. Three. So Don three. chooses three. Uh, Dave, oh, I have two Ds now. I better put two as a P there. So three, what about um, Vicky? 
you know what? In honor of Leslie, I'm going to pick six. Oh, Leslie's <laughs> no, Leslie's coming. She's supposed to be here. So oh. you're taking her number. She's oh like, no, 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 no. I, if she's coming, I thought just the three of us would. She, is no, she going to play the game? Leslie's got. I'm hoping she's going to show up because she's doing four of the questions this week. Okay, no, 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 no. Then I will pick four. 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 Good. Um, My next David. favorite number. And David, now Don took your three. You usually take three. That's so. okay. Yeah. I'll take. I'll take one. Oh, David, very good. One. So we have. Um, so we're gonna. Oh, Joyce is in the other room. Let me. I'm gonna get the, the special rolly die. Here it is. Ooh, nice. So we're gonna figure out who gets to go first, second, and third. So are you ready? And I yep. will stop. This will go on forever if I don't stop this with my hand. But I'm not doing anything, anything intentional with it. Four. All right. Okay. That's that's really good. Right. No. Three. No wait. I I have four. Oh, I'm so sorry. Vicky has four. Vicky. Yes. Will you go first, second, or third. Forgive me. I'll go first. Why not? Sure. Vicky first. Go get him, Vicky. Gone. You. That's gonna. David will win anyway. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Um, Don, do, would you like to be second or third? Because we rolled a three here. I'll be third. Oh. Ooh. So yeah. David Schubert, you get to be second. All right. So here we go. Uh, Vicky, then David, then Don will be the order. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the proceedings. Yeah. I have a couple of questions. I'm hoping Leslie shows up uh, with more. If not, it's going to be a very short quiz and a meaningless one. So, whatever. All right, here we go. Um, um, television. Vicky, this yes. is for you. Okay. Premiering today in Rome is Federico Fellini's landmark film, La Dolce Vita, mm. about a journalist discovering the highs and lows of Italian nightlife. Right. Here's some trivia. <laughs> About the film from IMDb, but one of them. Have you been using the bell? Is for I, I've just started the questions. I've never heard the bell. Yeah, yeah I've I, I just started telling. Oh, okay. One of these from IM. That's my darling adorable wife. Say hello to Joyce, everybody. Hello, hello Joyce. Hello. hello. Barney Joyce. Hello, hello. Which of these is false about the well, Joyce? Okay. okay. A. Uh, doing the famous fountain scene, Marcello Mastroianni was really cold and also really drunk. <laughs> B, in the film, French actor Alain Cuny plays Marcello's intellectual friend, Steiner. But Fellini's first choice for the role was American actor Henry Fonda. Hmm. C, okay. the word paparazzi from marauding media was first used in this film. Or D, among the women in Marcello's entourage are then 16-year-old Michelle Phillips, who would find great fame as one of the mamas in The Mamas and the Papas. That's right. One of these is false. False. Oh my goodness. Um, I have no idea. I'm just gonna say Henry Fonda. That one. False. It is false. You're saying it is not true that the first choice by Fellini to play um Mar the Marcello the character's name Marcello in the film. By the name of Henry. Right. But is it your final answer? Sure, why not? <laughs> Oh, as as fond uh, as I am of you, Vicky, it's wrong. That is not the correct answer, I'm afraid. It's okay. It, it really All right. I didn't expect it to be. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sports. You have the sacred responsibility of rolling the one sided die. Oh, I'm going to toss it to you. Because we have to David. Decide. David gets it now. Go ahead, David. What's I, the answer? Uh, I have one, right? You, um, David, sure has one. I just rolled a four, so Vicky can't go again. <laughs> David, Joyce just rolled them one. Okay. All right. So my choices are, say that again. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'll read them again. Which of these is false about La Dolce Vita? A, doing the famous fountain scene, Marcello Mastraiaghi was really cold and also really drunk. Drunk, okay. So the word paparazzi from marauding media was first used in this film. Right. Or D. That would be a good name for a, for a media company, Marauding Media. Marauding, Marauding Media. I made, I made that up. <laughs> Among the women in Marcello's entourage, ooh, excuse me, are then 16-year-old Michelle Phillips, who is my great fame, oh. as one of the mamas and the papas, oh, as one of the mamas in the mamas and the papas. Right. right. Now, any of those could be true, and I haven't seen the movie in a long time, and even if I had just seen it, that wouldn't help me any. Uh, <laughs> 
David is uh, let me see. Uh, so either Marcello was drunk and cold during the fountain scene, or uh, Michelle Phillips was one of the was in the crowd somewhere, or uh, what was the second one? Um, the word paparazzi for marauding media was first used in this. Oh, paparazzi. Movie. Now that's interesting. I think that's true about paparazzi, although I don't know that may be a common myth because that's it was used so much. Um, uh, I think that Marcello, the character Marcello, was supposed to be drunk in the fountain scene, and maybe he did for realism. I don't know. It could be. It could be anything. Uh, I'll say. I'll say one is not true. I'll say that he was not really drunk. You're going to say that Marcello Mastroianni was faking, I mean, he was acting, yeah, was acting, was acting. outside the Fountain of Trevi in yeah. um, La Dolce Vita. Okay. Yes. Well, as the moderator of this panel, I am <laughs> drunk on power, and Marcello Mastriani was, in fact, really, really no. actually drunk. Okay. In fact, it was the I'm... only way he could do this. It was... Yeah, he... right. He got wrong. No. Uh, uh, the ding, 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 I, the bell is one you get right. Uh, Ooh, Don. Don gets a chance now. It's a 50 50. But I didn't want to say that the, the thing was, it was so cold and his clothes were so wet that the only way he could do the, he didn't just want to get drunk. It was the only way he could get through the scene. Stay warm. Uh, meanwhile, Gina Lola Bridget, no problem. <laughs> Ursula Andrus. Ursula, no, it was, it was Gina. It was Ursula Andrus. No. No, she wasn't in that movie. Yes, um, she was. Ursula Andrus in, in La Dolce. I thought it was Gina Lola Brigida. I'm pretty sure it's Ursula Andrus. Oh, you might. It was not, it was not Gina Lola Brigida. Actress starred in La Dolce Vita. Joyce is looking this up. We have our judge. Oh, um, oh, it might have been Eckberg. Anita Eckberg. Oh, it was Anita Eckberg. Oh, it was Anita Eckberg. It was Some blonde. <laughs> God, yeah. Well, it's an iconic scene. You know, it's, <laughs> That's right. No, well, it wasn't Dino Lola Bridge, though. It was not. No, it was. It was. <laughs> anyway, uh, Don Pearl, you have a chance to steal this question and get two points. Yes, I have a 50 50 chance, actually. You do, yes. Yeah. You're not a math teacher, but you figured that one out. Well, <laughs> Thank you. Brilliant. <laughs> one step shy of brilliant. Oh, so, yeah, here, here's the iconic. Uh, an iconic shot of Anita. Yeah, oh, beautiful. Yeah. Oh, so it's Anita Eckberg. Her. Yeah. That's iconic, is right. That was Mastriani. <laughs> this is actually Michelle Mastriani. He was is so there... old, he grew hair to to you know, get his back warm. No, I... Is she in a shower? A shower of water. In the fountain. The fountain. The Trevi fountain. Oh, famous. yeah. All right. So getting back to the issue at hand. Something to distract all of us. The, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yes. iconic scene in the film. Okay. Um, oh, it's my phone. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, Don. Do you need me to read the... Um... Two that are left? Yeah. Okay, one, the one that I do remember is that uh, one of the uh, bit players in the movie came to be one of the mamas and the mamas and papas. Right. And the other one. Ones. What's the other one? The other one well, is the term true. paparazzi. The... Right. Oh, oh. Was it, right. Was the first time paparazzi was used. Right. One of those is false. Yeah. Michelle Phillips or paparazzi? Well, I'm going for paparazzi seems like an old term to me. So I think that was true at the time. However, I think that uh, the woman who was a bit player there, who became famous, as one of the mamas and the papas seems so outlandish that I think it's true. So paparazzi. I'm going for that one. So, so which one are you? Which one is false? Which is false? The paparazzi is oh. false. Oh, that's a good question. Which one is false? It's that. Right. that the whole question is which is Michelle that. Phillips or paparazzi? Use your phone and text our chain with Leslie. Oh, we'll see sorry. where the hell she is. Yeah. Uh, I don't have what do phone. you think, Dan? Oh, yeah. I got it. So, all right, I'm going to go on absolutely no evidence whatsoever, and um, I think the, 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 it's just too outlandish. The story about the mamas and the papas is too too outlandish. So I'm going to go for that one. That's that that's false. false. That, that's that is false. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You're saying it is not true that Michelle Phillips 
a big part in La Dolce Vita is false. Final I answer. say that's false, yes. <laughs> All the leaves are brown and the skies are gray. You are absolutely correct. Don. Oh, excellent, Don. Well, oh, thank you. Michelle that's what you call blind luck. Was <laughs> right. nothing to do with the, the uh, right. <laughs> California show. But, but, um, you might know this, that someone who did have more than a bit part was an actress and singer named Nico. Do we all know oh. who or what she became? No. So Nico has a, a fairly featured role in a couple of scenes in La Dolce Vita. She might, she was a model. She migrated, got to New York, fell in with the Andy Warhol crowd, um, mm. put her in Chelsea Girls, and then hooked her up with Lou Reed and John Cale, and she became part of the first iteration of the Velvet Underground. So oh, nice. So, singer actress, and that's what she's best known for. Oh. Yeah. So, Could you call that a cameo role that she had? More than she wasn't. She was on screen. She was in scenes. So oh. it like you see her for ten seconds, and like she. But she's also not an important. Yeah, San Sandra Lee was also in that movie. Sandra Lee, who's that? Yeah. You know the uh, singer who was the original Tiger Lily in Peter Pan, oh. and she was in a lot of. She was in High Button Shoes. Did not know that. She's Thank a, and she's uh, uh, been in a couple of a couple of musicals. Hmm. Well, cool. I mean, David is our, our you know our movie trivia. Yes. Yeah, guru, but That's it's nice to know, David. Yes, yeah, yeah. she was in. Yeah, the, she's best known as being the original Tiger Lily in the uh, Mary Martin Peter Pan. Well, oh. I remember Natalie Merchant gets the song for the song title Tiger Lily. I never made that connection. It could be from Peter Pan, but also Tiger Lily is a kind of lily. So we don't I know. I wonder if she's Maybe. Peter Pan. Oh. It could be. Oh, or she eats a lot of peanut butter. And yeah. Peter Pan was her favorite brand. And, uh, Tiger Lily. It's an oxymoron, isn't it? I just wrote to Leslie. Yes. But it's also a, uh, yeah. Wait, what's, a, what's an oxymoron? Peter tiger and a lily, you don't think of them as the same. As a, a tiger is very ferocious. A lily is not as, <laughs> as delicate. Well, not, not if you think of Lily Munster. Where are we going with this? I don't know. No. Uh, anyway, um, we have a two question. Don Pearl. So, so let's move on to the next question. Next question. And Joyce, I may ask you to do one of your magical things to kind of be ready in uh, need, with, with Leslie in absentia. We might need a trivia question or two. Jo Joyce has a screaming goat there. I don't know if you, you know that. I wrote so. Leslie in the group chat, but I don't know. Sometimes she, sometimes Leslie will like text very late at night, so I wonder if she was up very late. And, and he's still sleeping, uh, which yeah. doesn't really help me very much. No, um, she's quite tired. But we have David Sheward to get to the next direct question. So, All right. David, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Well, this is... Um, we haven't done this in a while, in a long while. This is change one letter. Oh, okay. So it's going to be two answers, each worth one point, right? Uh -huh. And they're the same except one letter different. And it's in poetry okay. form. Someone who was born in 1874 today, February 3rd, in Pennsylvania. Okay. This art collector and author gained fame through her repetition. Change one letter for a word that means a severe disposition. Well, it's got to be Stein and Stern. Gertrude Stein and Stern. Is that your final answer? Yes. Thanks to two points. Just when I'm trying to kill time in, in, in the show. Brilliant. David Stern gets nice it. job, Brilliant. David. Nice be. job. David Stern, well, well, what got it for you? The repetition, or, or how did you just Well, Susan said art collector and author. I and, yeah. and then she. She, yeah, she. and in 1874 works out to the age that she would be. She she lived. Yeah, uh, Leslie wrote something. Gertrude Stein. Yes. Well, well, Gertrude Stein. Of, Gertrude um, Stein and then, and then Stern. Oh, oh, also. Yeah, um, but the problem is I don't have the link. I can I can email her the link in a second. Send me the no, send me the link um to my email, my Gmail, and I'm going to text her. And I'm going to copy it into my text to her. All right, fine, fine. Just. Good. Um, Give me one. Talk amongst yourselves, <laughs> people. That's technology. I, should I, think, I think I was getting her confused. Um, Hold on, I'm Scott kidding. Fitzgerald, sometime lover, Zelda. Zelda. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Scott's wife. Wife. Yeah. yeah in your, on your Zelda Fitzgerald. Scott's wife. Yeah. Zelda was his wife. I'll send it to her. I can't. 
I can just pull it from my phone. Yeah. yeah. And I know she was, I think Stein was born in Oakland, California. And she and her brother Leo went to Paris and started to collect art. And Leo kind of got disillusioned with everything. And then she took up with Alice B. Toklas, who was also an American. And, and they, she, she wasn't they, in the police, Scott. She was in uh, Into Brownies. I remember that, yeah. Well, that was what she's kind of infamous for. That was a little, little joke. I'm like, and, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> they hosted a, uh, a salon in Paris for the right. exiled Americans. That's, That's interesting. Like, yeah. As far as Hemingway was concerned, yes. she was an emasculating force in um, uh, Wait, what? now his name is escaping me. Oh, my. Wait, yeah, I'll come up with it later. Or Fitzgerald? Yes. Oh. Yes, thank you. Who was an emasculating force? Zelda. Oh, Zelda. Oh. <laughs> We're all over the place. She drove him nuts. <laughs> it's hey, a very common a question. Time, Next question. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, David Schur has two points. Don Pearl has two points. And I, I have, have nothing. Question, and then I'm praying Leslie will get on uh, on our link and be able to take part. So here's the deal, Vicky. Oh no, it's Don's question. Is it? Oh, I'm so, oh, I'm so sorry. You're right, Don. Don, this question goes directly to you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> You're most welcome. Here's 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 the thing, though. I don't know if you remember these. This is called three clues in the news. All right. And <laughs> what you see, I know, I know. Don't be afraid. Don't be frightened. I'm going to give you three words. Oh, thank God. Three words. What? Leslie just entered the way. Oh. <laughs> thank God you found three. See, I sent her the link and the, I copied it from your desk. Yeah. Um, so there, I'm going to give you three words. They are not connected to each other. <laughs> and they're not expletives. And they're not dirty. <laughs> However, each of these words connects to another word, the same word, the word that you're looking John for. John is a linguist. He can figure it out. <laughs> He's a kind linguist, if you know what I'm saying. So it might be word blank or blank word. Do you remember doing this, Don? When, have you been on the show where we've done this? I've been on the show before, but if we have done this, I have no recollection of it. I think you blocked it. Well, out let me give you an example. Let me let me give you a, uh, an example of how that kind of works for our three clues in the news. So let's say I give you these three words: um, spider, shines, pox. Hmm. What word could go with all three of these words? Like blank spider or spider blank, blank shines, etc. So what? What? This is just a, a fake example, but what might be a word that would go with all? Oh, a, a word that would go with spider, with shines, and with pox. Right. Yes. That has a tail. <laughs> it has a tail. tail. It has a tail. <laughs> well, a, well, and maybe we share pox, some DNA. A pox is like a plague. Right. A plague beyond your houses is kind of Shakespearean. Don't overthink spider, it, Don. Don't That's the, the trick is could don't carry, overthink it. Think, think the thing that came out of COVID. Um, and maybe yeah. the light would shine on the spider. Who no, no, no. The it's one word. It's light. one word that links them all. Light. What? Sorry? Light. Light. No. So, but the thing is, you won't, won't really have light spider or spider light. Light shines for sure, but not light. Pox light. Oh, that'd be a very bad beer. So <laughs> let's just tell them what it is. So, Don, the answer is, <laughs> and, and, and ever so appropriately for today, monkey, because it could be monkey shines. Um, what was the other Mo monkey pox? Monkey pox, spider monkey, his name? Spider, spider monkey. monkey, right? Please, <laughs> bless you. Right, Come here, come here. I turned six. I never would. I, I never would have gotten that. Yeah. Uh, but that's that's the that's the game. So it's Thank three you. three words that have one at one word that co is connected to each of the three. They are not connected to each other. One word matches all three of so them. So there are three nouns, and there should be one adjective that would connect with all those. It doesn't have to be an adjective. It could be a noun. It could be a noun. It could be anything. I mean, they might not even be right. a noun. In this case, they're nouns. Okay. Right. Um, so 
are you god help us are you ready are you are you ready for three, words three, news, this week? three clues in the news all right here we oh, go and, and the answer this week though is going to be something that's connected to something that happened in the news in society the last few days cool so that, that cool. gives you a clue as to kind of a word that you're looking for and yes, yes these are all they're actually three well i'm not going to get into parts of this week. okay here we go the words are match arm mud match arm and mug mud mud the, the past tense of mud. Match, 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 mud. arm, and mud. Okay. Mm. Mugged. Has it, but mud. Like, mud. Like if you take dirt and put water in it. Oh, and mud. I have mud. As in mud. beat up on the street. No. Mud. Mud. M U D. I got it now. Okay. Not mud. Match, mud. arm, mud. We're going to help you, Don. I hope yeah. so. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> And we'll need all the help because Leslie's having trouble coming in, I guess. Um, no, I'm here. I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, I yes. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I've been, I've been, I can't, I can't possibly go on camera, but I'm here. Good. Well, well there I'm, you are. Welcome. Not ready for your close up. Not ready for anything. Oh, oh. all right. Okay. Well, Don has his three clues in the news. So they so are. I, I got mud, match, and arm. I've got them. Yeah. All right. So, so the job here that has fallen, befallen to me is uh, to find a word which would link those three. No, no, no. Well, yes. Doesn't, it doesn't link them each, or are they that, that goes it, with each one? That goes, goes with, each, with each one. A word that goes with each one. Okay. Right. So the words are not connected to each other. Each right. is connected to the words that you're looking for. Yeah. Like, let's just say, Don. Let's use yeah. the word wasp. One word. You go, one word. one word, wasp. You go, hmm, mud wasp, but it's not mud arm or, or wasp arm, and there's not a wasp match. So it can't be wasp. It has to no. be something else. Love match. You go, hmm, but there's no love arm. So it can't oh. be love. So you got to oh. think of the word that matches all three of these. So sling, for example, mud, a mud sling, a sling for the arm. But sling for a match, that's a stretch, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So that couldn't be it. And it has to deal with, with well, current events as well, no? Right. Something in the news. So um, match maker, arm maker, mud maker. He's no. got the, he, he has the gist now. So now it's just finding the word. Yeah. Okay. I so see. You got it. Okay. So I have to come up with a word that would fit for all three. Right. How long of a silence will you will you entertain? Two <laughs> <laughs> seconds. It's rare. We're, on the we're helping you. We welcome it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're doing it. Okay. Uh, and maker, arm maker, arm, mud, and match. Oh my heavens! I need some help. Well, that we I can't think of. Uh, well, whatever. Yeah. Match, match game, but that's not it. Arm. Burnt, burnt match, lit match. Burnt match, that's good. Mm. But there's not burnt mud. Lit match. Don, um, did you say something in Spanish, Don? That uh, and you, and then we'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't think of anything, I mean, we'll give you a little more time. But if you can't yeah. think of anything, feel free to just say anything or, or promote your poetry or something like that. But, um, you know, but take another moment to <laughs> see if you can, you can suss it out. Yeah. You have left me so distracted, I can't bring myself back. Match. And there's audio match. Match. Light. Light. Um, light. But, and it has to do with current events. Things yes. that, something that's going on right now as we speak. Well, arm, mud. Oh my God, Gaza! Oh, this is a horror story. 
I read, I read your letter to the Grilly Tribune, and I almost blocked you on Facebook. So do, oh, no. do not go there. <laughs> you almost did what to me on Facebook? I almost blocked you on Facebook and, and wanted to cut your throat. So oh, do not hey. do not go there. Um, match. No, I can't. Match point. Match point. That's a good one. Mud point, but no. Mud. No, an arm point. Point, point mud. No. Um, ma uh, match point. Match uh, or something. Match. Tennis match. Tennis, tennis. arm. Tennis, tennis mud. Arm. Tennis mud. Or muddy. Yeah. See. Right again. Ah, look, Dave's got a look on his face. Well, no, well, there was something. Well, I'm not gonna. But again, the the, the words are the clues are match. Mm -hmm. Arm, arm, mud, mud, and it has to do with political everydayness. No, it could be an obit. It could be somebody who died. It could be anything in the news. That's oh, correct. who died? Boxing. Well, boxing, match, hmm. boxing, mud. Are we all? Are we all? Mud boxing. What's the other one? Arm, armchair. Um, oh, yeah, the root of mud. Mud is the root. Mud, mud. Has this now become group thing? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, We're hoping that. <laughs> it's it's group has thing. to be just, you know, all of the possible clues. I know. Just, 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 promote, just, just promote your, uh, you know. Yeah, just, yeah, Don, it's, it's time for you to come up with Just take something and then we move something. on. Yeah. yeah. How about, just, what's the first letter? No, no, no. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> we have two other people. Just think. I have a oh, I pass. You pass. more than happy to pass. All right. Pass. Yeah. Yeah. Can you <laughs> okay, the die has come up. Number three, which is P, which is for Pearl. Can you roll another die? Okay. Um, six. But Leslie can't play because okay. she's, you know, a, a moderator, a co-moderator. Well, I could, I could play if nobody else gets it. But I'm yeah, not. Yeah, you can go it. ahead, Leslie. Go. No, 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 no. At the end, at the very end, if you all fail, and I'm I'm failing as well, so don't worry about it. Oh, uh, not nobody yet. Come on, <laughs> five. <laughs> Jesus Christ, two, six, <laughs> two, six, six, two. <laughs> I'm I'm not kidding here. This is this is going to bleed. Five. Wait, five, and six. <laughs> Give me one. <laughs> It really wants me to try to answer it, doesn't it? It does. Well, I just rolled a four with my foot. <laughs> Pele, Pele. Pele. Okay. Um, all right. I have no idea. Number one, I got no idea at all. I've been sitting here helping Don, and, and it ain't helping me at all. So do you Thank want you, Vicky. Or what do you <laughs> oh, God. I mean, really, just I, I'm, I'm doing what everyone else is doing, um, and I'm overthinking it. Um, um, and I thought this like, one would not be so a broken arm, um, an armchair. Um, yeah, yeah. um, that's one of the words, yeah. Is, armchair, arm, arm, armoire, <laughs> an armoire, a mudwire, <laughs> um, mud facial, arm facial, no, um. <laughs> I, I don't, I seriously, I don't know. I'm just. All right. Do you want to, do you want to do an okay. It's really horrible. I'm, I'm, great passing. I'm right. passing over to David. Go ahead, okay. David. David Seward. All right. I'm just going to, okay. The only, uh, let me see. Match. Point. Mud point. Mud flap. Mud hem. <laughs> None of these work with arm. Arm a chore. Arm. Arms race. Or mud. Mud. Uh, well, wait a minute. Well, last night there was an attack in Iran, but no, that doesn't fit with anything. Drone. No, that doesn't fit with anything either. Uh, now I, I'll, I'll say flap. Mud flap. flap. Mud flap. flap. I'll say flap. Final answer, David. Yeah. Mud yeah. Flap is let's see if that the word. Ah. No, I'm afraid I'm going to close no. the caps on that. Let's give Leslie hope and Come on, Leslie, you can do it. No, I, you know, I've, I've gone through, I've listened to all of yours and I've gone through what was in my head. The only word I know that fits each one of them, but it's not, it's not the right way. You can't put it, you need another word to make it work. 
would be thrown, like mud thrown, a match could be thrown, you could throw with your arm or arm thrown. But I what? throw throw is the only word I throw, like sling mud. Oh, I got it. That would be, that, that would be okay. really okay. stretching it. Throw is the only word I got. So no, I that's it. I throw is the only word I could come up with that fits them all. Uh, in any I, way. Okay, Dave, what is it? Right. Well, Joyce um was was the closest one on the right track to this. So it the, the words were um what match. <laughs> match arm mud. Mud. And the word that goes with all three is what? Wrestling. Oh, oh mud rest arm wrestling. Oh, oh the yeah, wrestling you're right. match. You're right. Wrestling you're right. match, yeah. mud wrestling, arm Got wrestling. it. Yeah, that's that's, that's it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. not a that's not a stretch like some of yours have been. Thank you. Thank no, that's a very it's very clear cut. Just <laughs> none of us. What does it have to do with the news? Oh, you haven't. Well, maybe you, you don't know Vince McMahon, who founded the world. Oh, did he die? No, no, he, no. He, he oh, was, <laughs> he, he has to step down from TKO, which oh, because he's got numerous sexual assault and oh and yeah didn't that happen like years ago didn't he wasn't he accused of that years Always ago accused, but now he's like in serious not just sexual assault but like sex trafficking like he'd get these girls to oh and people were joining the yeah. organization and, like, i i had heard that he'd been accused of all this like years ago but it's so it's popped up again. Or, or didn't Canada. his wife run for Senator from Connecticut or something. Yes, yes, she's planning to. I don't know whether she did. But she did before. Mm -hmm. So, so, so did he give it over to his son or what, or his daughter? Well, I'm not sure who took over. It's TKO is now the name of the organization that runs all these things. I don't know. Well, I'm sure they kept it in the family one way or the other. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. 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 Anyway, <laughs> that's that's was that question. Okay. So we still have a a. Tie game. <laughs> I have a tiebreaker if you want a tiebreaker. Well, well, not yet. Yeah, I don't have any more questions, Leslie. I hope you came up with a couple. I have, I have, I have two questions. One is a tiebreaker, but it can be used as a question. <clears throat> well, let's, okay. let's have. How do we do this then? Who is the director? How many? How many have you had so far? Three. We've only had one round. <laughs> okay. Well, you won't have a whole round because I only have two questions. Okay. That's all right. Let's just do the tiebreaker. I, I, I have to. I have to go when my plumber gets here. Yeah, let's just do the tiebreaker. Let's just do the tiebreaker, Les. So, <laughs> okay, what's the tie? What is it? What's all the right. question? Well, wait, I have to get to it. Hang and for the okay. tiebreaker, remember, you all have to write down. Oh, let me get my uh, pen. Let me get. Uh, uh, let me get my. Uh, get a piece of paper. So, and this way, you can all answer, you know, visually at the same time. David, I'm so sorry for disappointing you. I apologize. Oh, I'm I'm used to it. Leslie, you could never oh, be. Oh, shut up! You're used to it. <laughs> do you want Do you want another question? I have a good question. Well, that's the deal. We could do it for fun, but we can't give it to anyone. We can sort of. No, we'll just do the tiebreaker. That'd All be right. Fun. Well, okay, I got the tiebreaker. Well, no, okay. actually, or well, hold on. No, no, let's do this because Dave's uh, his uh, his super is gonna come soon. Part of this anyway. So let's see. No. Um, Dave is your. Oh, no. He's getting a piece of paper. Nice to oh, just a minute. This guy so if there's time after the tiebreaker, we can also have Leslie read the other question. And we could, you, for fun. I'll just call out answers if you know it. So that'd be fun. For fun. Yeah. I want to let Leslie go through the work of coming up with a question and then I. Can... Oh, no, no, it's okay. I, that, got that's a pencil. my punishment. Got so a my pencil. punishment is you don't I'm ready. Lose it. All right. I'm what's ready. the question, Leslie? We're wait, uh, wait. Are we doing the tiebreaker or the question? Yeah. No, the tiebreaker. Okay, the tiebreaker. This Aquarius, born today in 1979, uh, became a bit player at a very early age. Just one of the gang at first, his empathetic brand of humor, brand of humor, soon singled him out for superstardom, and his star has shown brightly for the last 40 plus years on both the big and small screen. He's also just finished a long run in an off-Broadway show. Hmm. Would you like that again? Oh, okay. One more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This Aquarius, born today in 1979, became a bit player at an early age. Just one of the gang at first, his empathetic brand of humor soon singled him out for superstardom. And his star has shone brightly for the last 40 plus years on both the big and small screen. 
He's also just finished a long run in an off-Broadway show. Nineteen seventy nine. Write it down. Don't say it. No, I, 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 I promise I won't. You gotta write it. Don't say it. But I'm trying to remember who. Oh, superstardom! Somebody who's forty four years old. Uh, Born nineteen seventy nine. Am I wrong? Could be forty five, depending on the month. Oh, it is. It is today. So, so forty five. It's a man. Um, the man. And it's a man who was a bit player. Said his funny, somebody who's funny, yeah. somebody who's forty five years old, funny, and just finished an mm -hmm. off Broadway show. Mm -hmm. I'm not up on my off Broadway shows. Doesn't nothing leaps to mind, but you know, I'm just gonna. Uh, somebody with a long run. Is it long running, Leslie? Off Broadway show. It was a long running off Broadway show. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um. A bit player. Okay, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know the off Broadway shows. I'm sorry. Um, although my show ran seven years off Broadway. You Your show was just in Cincinnati at the Playhouse. It was. Yeah, but you weren't doing it. No, I'm not doing that. All right. Was, uh, I'm, this weekend I'm, I was in Columbus, Indiana, doing my show, uh, my game it. show. Um, David has an answer. Anybody else have uh, somebody who's forty five years old just finished an off Broadway run and is funny? Somebody who's funny in an off Broadway role. I just don't know who was off Broadway, um, and I don't know who's forty five years old, but I don't know. All right, I'm going to say something that's wrong. Yeah, I don't know. Go ahead. Oh, what do we think it is? Don, are you in this or you're out of this? Well, I'd like to be in it, but then I decided I'm going to cheat. So I went to my magic box here, and I wrote uh, <laughs> someone born. Don't say anything. That's, that's Don, cheating, Don. Don, Don, that's, a cheated, Don that's a sin. That's a sin, Don. He's in purgatory for that. That's not there. Not some sort of amelioration. Just days in purgatory. Okay. All right. Well, all right. Well, well, that comes from the Latin for God or to cleanse. So maybe there would be a cleansing you of my need a sin. Cleanse. Yeah, okay. It would be a Shonda, Don, a Shonda. A, a Shonda. Don. Oh, don't give that word to me. Please. But Leslie, can you do me a favor and read the question one more time? And then one more time. Sure. Your sure. Sure, I just have to go back to it. It's on a different screen. Okay. This Aquarius, born today in 1979, became a bit player at an early age. Just one of the gang at first, his empathetic, his empathetic brand of comedy soon singled him out for superstardom, and his star has shone brightly for the last 40-plus years on both the big and small screen. He's also just finished a long run in an off-Broadway show. Hmm. Three, two, one. I have no idea. So, Jeremy oh, Jordan. Jeremy Jordan. I have and who do you have? have? Oh, Hunter. Right. Um, <laughs> I had Chris Rock. <laughs> no, no. And who do you have, Dave? Dave Lefko, who did you have? Oh, I, I said Hunter Foster from Little Shop. That was on <laughs> no, Broadway. Okay, you ready? Yes. You're all going to hate me. What? Yeah. It's Elmo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Elmo. Oh, it's okay. Elmo. Okay. Elmo, who wants to know how we're doing? Is, though, are you talking about Sesame Street Live, the musical? Yes. That wasn't a long run. It was six months. That's a long run. Oh, <laughs> was, it? was it? Was it? Yes, it was. It was. A, you know, it was a come back. I think it. It, it, it was. For, it's over. It, at, it's over at five five five. It's been. It's been all around, but it's last. Oh run was well, it was at the five little Schubert, right? I don't even know. If, yes, it was. Yes, it was. <laughs> the, it and wasn't around. it at the little Schubert in the fall, and then it it closed. But and then it, it went back to it. yeah, but it, it kept running, you know, and, oh, and then wow. it went back to uh okay. went over to uh what's his name? Eric Krebs place. But did you see that Elmo, the on yes, on yes, the, yes, Elmo yes. on Facebook or TikTok or something said all it was was this is Elmo, how, how are it you was doing? On, it was on like X, that. it was on Twitter. 
He just said, how are you? How are you feeling? How are you checking on you? Something like that. And the response, all these people sort of unloaded, I'm not doing well, or I'm doing fine, or thank you, no one ever asked me any longer. It was just this remarkably lovely response yes. to just and, this really And then Larry question. David smacked him on television. <laughs> oh, that's right, as a joke. But, yeah, yeah. No, it's not a joke, because now... Larry David went on some show ostensibly to apologize. To apologize. Said, no. But it he was, he only he meant it, it as a joke. He said, you know? no, I would do it again. No, what happened was he was trying to think of what he was going to say when he was going on and Elmo was talking. And he said, this annoying little voice was sitting there talking about mental health. And I couldn't stand it anymore. <laughs> and he said, if you'd been there, you would have done the same thing. Wow. <laughs> That's so Larry David. That's so. That is so Larry David. Because I remember when Elmo became a meme a few years ago, where they extracted a, a clip from Sesame Street where he got mad at his friend because oh, yeah. she had a pet rock yeah. and she was paying more attention to <laughs> than him. And he, he really flips out. He goes batshit on her. And then it became this meme of Elmo, whom you never see really getting angry. Oh. It's right. a rock! You know? Right, right, right. Well, that's, a, that's very Larry David, too, you know? Yeah. Right. Right, right, right. So if we have time and, and your plumber's not there, uh, David, do you want to... Wait, wait. So it's a tie between David and Don. So congratulations. Well, no, we have another question. Oh, you, want that, you want the last, you want the other question I wrote? Yes. Okay. I just okay. got a text. Make it go. Okay. Uh, it is not Elmo. The, the other question is not Elmo, just so you know. It's Big Bird. <laughs> in case, that's right, in case you were confused. All right. This is the not the Elmo. Okay. All right. What's the other question? I got a text this is the typer. Get another piece okay. of paper. Okay, go ahead. No, this one you have. No, no, you have to write the answer. It, you, you have to but choose an answer. Hello, Rocco. Hello, Rocco. <laughs> Hello, Rocco. <laughs> okay. Right. Adorable. And he punched, and he punched <laughs> Elmo's father, by the way. Legally. Okay, are you ready? Right. Yes. What, what, okay. Another question? Okay. One more question, just for fun. Yeah, okay. this is just for fun, but it's an ABC. It's a multiple choice. All right. Okay. In 1959, on February 3rd, earned the awful sobriquet of the day the music died, mm -hmm. when a small plane carrying rock and roll legend right. Buddy Holly. Did you already do something on this? The big oh, bopper. No, 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 no. The big bopper. The, the big the Richie Valens and the Big Bopper crashed yeah. in Clear Lake, Iowa. Right. What do you know about Iowa? Oh. <laughs> corn. Got a lot of corn. Of these, which of these answers is false? Okay. A. The state motto is our liberties we prize and our rights we will maintain. B. They came by their nickname. Hang on. Sorry, they came by their nickname of the Hawkeye State in honor of the great Chief, Chief Hawkeye of the Meskawaki tribe. Okay. C. You, I'll go. I'll go over them all in a minute. Let me get them all out first. C. The capital of Iowa is Davenport, Des Moines, Dubuque, or Sioux City. Sioux City. Iowa is and and D the last question. I'm confused about the numbering and the lettering now. Iowa is bordered by a confluence of other states, including Missouri, Minnesota, Illinois, and North Dakota. I will go back to the beginning now and read everything That's again. True. I'm going back to read it all again. Yes. Which one of these is false? And don't say your answer out loud till it's your turn. In 1959, February 3rd, earned the awful sobriquet of the off of the day the music died when a small plane. Right. No, no, we got that. It's the four things about Iowa. Okay, but your okay, third question, okay. your third question, you're asking the the what is the capital instead of saying Des Moines is the capital of Iowa. Is that correct? Something like that. Well, Sorry, I mean, if Dave. you just answered it, then you took that question out. You know, Vicky. <laughs> I did. I said Sioux City because it was so simple. All right. Well, but that's not. <laughs> you're saying you're saying Sioux City is false. No, it's true. Well, then why don't you wait your turn? Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know how else to say that. Quiz. A. Okay. <laughs> A. The state motto is "Our liberties we prize and our rights we will maintain." No idea. 
That's question one. Okay. Of the, I'm sorry, that's that's the A part. That's, yeah, the, that's the first part. That's the first multiple choice. The okay. second multiple choice, B, they came by their nickname, the Hawkeye State, in honor of the great chief, uh, chief Hawkeye of the Meskowaki tribe. Could be. C, the capital of Iowa is Davenport, Des Moines, Dubuque, or Sioux City. You're right. I did change the way that was done. I'm sorry about that. I was, I was very tired. Are true, the first two are true or false. D. Yeah, the first two are the first two are true or false. The last one will be true or false. No, these the last two are going to be multiple choice questions. I got confused about it myself. No, no, it's okay. Go ahead. Question. It's not answers or questions. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Stop. 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 Let, all right. So see the the next two now go into the true or into the uh the multiple choice thing again. My mistake. I'm sorry, but no, but it no, works no. anyway. The capital of Iowa is Davenport, Des Moines, Dubuque, or Sioux City. If you're looking it up, Pearl, I'm going to come and get you. Iowa know. is bordered by a confluence of other states, including Missouri, Minnesota, Illinois, and North Dakota. Now, will you re roll and get somebody whose choice it is, please? Oh, well, okay. So, I don't know how we. Right. I think you made this more complicated than it needs to be. I I don't all doubt right. it, David. Okay. I don't doubt it at all. No, nope. you all you right. do some of them, and you tell me how easy it is. So, all right, the capital of Iowa is Des Moines. I'll get that I, one. All right, is she correct? Is is Vicky correct that the capital of Iowa is Des Moines? I'd forgotten this. Yes, she is correct that that, but that's not the way this goes. All right. How okay. Was, was it busy? <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. You have to find out what's false, not what's true. Yeah, but the, uh, that question had four, no, three she, false answers in it. I'll say. Oh, oh well, that's, well, that was the right way to do it, right? The state. No, no, but it's okay. No. The capital of Iowa is Des Moines. Wait, wait, wait. Stop, stop, stop. Only one All of right. these answers is false. One of these, only one of these is Des Moines false. is not the answer to the question. Okay. No, no, no. It's all right. So the, the other one is the, so Native, the, American, the, the Native American. The Native American name. No, no, no. You're right. The others are all okay. But this is not one single question that you get to answer. There are three, four questions here. Right. Okay. So there are four separate questions. Vicky got one right. Leslie, what's what's one of the others? And we'll give somebody else a shot to answer the question. The, 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 the nickname came... The Hawkeye State came in honor of the great chief Hawkeye of the Meskowaki tribe. Who wants to answer true or false on that? Uh, I'll say it's false. Oh, just a minute. That's the plumber. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's the plumber. Wait, wait. So, so is it is it true or false, Leslie? False. Is that true it's or false? false? It's false. Oh, it's David, false. Got so David, David, David got that point. David got the point. Okay, that's all that had to happen, right? Yes, that's all that had to freaking happen. Okay. okay. So, so David wins. Oh, well, wait, Don. Well, yeah, because Don. Oh, Don got two points before. So Don, no, no, that's right. Wins. So the other two. Are they true or false? Oh, they must be true. No, no, I misunderstood what I was doing, and I, I, I made each separate, each one a separate question. Right. Okay. So, so all right. right. So yeah, the Let's, first one is Hawkeye. The, well, he did the Hawkeye thing, or he did the Hawkeye one. But let Don can answer yeah, the, the first one. You want to do the motto? Of oh, the motto. Don, Don, you can answer the one about what the, the four states that are uh, the surrounding it. Which were the four that you that you said were? Missouri, Minnesota, Illinois, and North Dakota. Well, Illinois is correct. I'm going to say that's that's false. Is that your is that your final answer? Yeah, it's a shot in the dark because I don't think it's North Dakota. I think it's South Dakota, but I could be wrong about that state to the north and the west. I kind of think it's South Dakota, but I'll go for. I'll go for false. I think you are correct, Don. Is he? Yeah, uh, okay. So you're taking out the North Dakota. Is that right, Don? I am. He says it's false. Okay. It's not right. Because Minnesota was right. but it, it Yes, Minnesota, Minnesota is, is right. right. You're absolutely right, Don. So now Excellent. it's a tie. Again. Two, more. Two points. Very Bravo, good. Don. Bravo. So I now it's another tie, five. right? <laughs> well, now Don and David have have four, but thank God I have two. Yes. yes. Um, but, is that all of them was? <laughs> no, they so didn't. I, answer, they the didn't rest of my day will be very happy. All right. 
All right, I'm going to say that state motto is, is true. Yes, yeah. you're right. I'm correct. That's now that. it's a tie yeah. for all three of us. Now Let's just say it's a tie. Three. Three. Let's oh, just say we all have four points. Was we I, was I right about the, the uh, thing yes, that we were. Were about ourselves? We okay. Okay. Yes, you were, David. Yeah. So I made this unnecessarily crazy. crazy. I didn't realize it was only one of the answers of four. Okay. I made okay. four it's separate okay. questions out of it. All right. it I'm good. so sorry. You did a good yeah. job, Leslie. No, okay, you're so excellent. Here's the deal. It's David all good. David writes for TotalTheater.com, TheaterLife.com, and CulturalDaily.com, as well as the David Desk. So, David, could you tell us quickly what couple of reviews you've written and we can read this week? I have a review of the new off-Broadway show Jonah at the Laura Pels um, and uh, the Broadway transfer of Days of Wine and Roses. Ooh. And I'm also working on a blog post on my goal this year is to see all the Oscar-nominated pictures before the Oscars on March 10th. Mm -hmm. And I've seen most of them, but not all of them. So I'm writing a blog on the ones I've been Which catching Which have you up not with. seen? Uh, well, I haven't seen the only major one I haven't seen is the color purple. I've seen everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, I I have seen four, uh, four of the five documentaries, two of the three of the foreign films, all but one of the short subjects. Uh, wow! And yeah, almost good. all the special effects. I just saw poor things, which I love. Poor th oh, oh, I did like poor. I saw that at a screening. Oh, poor I things, I thought was very good. I, that was I have to see about the plumber so, right now. David, thank you so much. <laughs> okay. And I'm and I'm seeing a matinee also. So well, see you So am I. What are you seeing? I'm seeing uh, what is it? Our class at BAM. Oh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to what uh, days of wine and roses. Okay. Oh, see wow. you later. Enjoy. Thank you, David. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Um, Vicky Quadi, you we can of course see you in Chicago. Well, what's you your can. Well, I'm. I am doing more traveling. I. I have that my lovely game show. Are you smarter than your eighth grade nun? Um, and I'll, I now I'm also booking a sports edition, um, that I came up with the sports edition, and I'm working on a music edition. So that's going to oh. be a lot of fun. I thought you said. I thought for a minute you were going to say you're working on a musical. That would be exciting. Yeah. Oh no, I I do have a musical. Um, and uh, I can tell a little bit more about that later when I get. Um, there is somebody interested, and in, uh, and so what? I I might have some decent news. Okay, in a so, bit, in a bit, you know, give give Dan Goggin a run for his money for once. Yeah, right. <laughs> I like him. He's a nice guy. Run for his nuns. <laughs> yeah. Nunsforfun.com is the way to keep on on track with what Vicky is doing, right. whether she's in the show or whether the show she's worked on or whether she's right. or at the Greenhouse Theater in Chicago. Nuns right. number four. Fun, nunsforfun.com. Vicky, right. love you. Thank you. Thank you for tolerating today. <laughs> Thank you for being with us every time here in the neighborhood. Love you. I really, I want to say, right. I really love your background. It's a classroom. Warm it class. is. It's classroom for one of my shows. <laughs> it's so orderly. Thank you. <laughs> every room I'm ever in where I'm teaching. Thank you, Vicky. I'm All going right. to let you go. And bye bye. Don Pearl. Don is a retired educator. Um, he's still a writer, still a poetry person. <laughs> that's that's the teaching in Chicago, not, not Colorado. Um, so you're well done? You're thinking I am. I just finished the memoir. 226 pages, I will say. After two years, three weeks, and two months. Um, oh, yeah. You're supposed to finally say finished it. I finished it, oh, about two months ago. And when you say you finished it, it, first draft or the final, final, it's done? Well, it's been edited. The only thing I'm adding right now is a bibliography and a page of acknowledgments. And then I will look for a publisher. Yeah. I mean, yeah. absolutely. I, I, you know, I wish I could tell you a yeah. publisher to go to. John, you can also, a lot of people, so I publish in like traditional presses, like academic presses, Don, but a uh -huh. lot of my Publish on Amazon, so they self-publish too. Well, that's too. You know, they want to get the message out, so they self-publish, right? So there's a there's all the sorts of roots stuff. You know? I should hook you up with my friend Iris, who has a couple of books yeah, out yeah. now from small. It's not self-published; they're legitimate yeah, small yeah, yeah. presses that are. That what does Iris write about? Well, Iris has written a couple of different books. One was about her father yeah, yeah. <clears throat> in World War Two, and then another. She just wrote a a funny, um, totally made up book about this this girl who is in an entourage with a rock star because he was dating her mom and, and completely fiction, fun, zany fiction. 
So it's all oh. next stop Boston. Yeah, next stop Boston is an oh, just got no, I, because I have a friend uh, who I, are you finished with Don? I didn't mean to interrupt. Hmm. I think he's finished oh. with me. Yeah, I'm, I'm finished. Okay. <laughs> Politically, I'm sorry. Well, I was just going to say, Leslie, tell us about you. Um, what are you? Leslie is with Charlie Gross on two on the aisle. Well, we got our latest one up. We finally got uh, on YouTube, which you can all uh, access if you wish. Just put in YouTube and put in um, uh, Buena Vista Club, the social club. That's the easiest thing to put in. Or put in Rachel Bloom. We reviewed the Rachel Bloom show, Death, Let Me Do My Show. And we reviewed the Buena Vista Social Club. And then we spent the, half, the rest of the show with our friends, David Lefkowitz and David Sheward and two other members of the drama desk, Deirdre Donovan and Diane Snyder, talking about upcoming shows for the rest of the season that we all wanted to see. And it came out very nicely. I mean, you know, oh. for a first try, for a first try, ad lib, no, no rehearsal. I think it came out quite well. I think I chose the brightest, the best and the brightest, and so it worked, you know. Yeah, and great. I like to do it. I'm not. I don't mean to cut in on 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 uh, Dave's gone by and you know predictions, but I certainly would love to do Oscar and and Tony and Drama Desk nominations uh, with a bunch of people. I think it'd be nice, but just enough to fit on screen, you know. Yeah, that was yeah. just the right number. That, that it was enough time to take. You know, any more would have been too much. Any any less would have been too few. I think. No, so I'm we're going to try to do story. that. It's a fun segment. I actually I recorded it too, just in case. Oh, you, it, it, I, well, you, but you got all of it, right? So you got all the stuff. That, you'll see how it was edited then. I, let me know what you think of the editing job, because I think Charlie is a great editor. I really do. Oh, good. Oh, good. I can't wait. Everybody go to the YouTube channel for Two on the Eye. Look for Charlie. What, what is the actual channel? Is it Charlie D. Gross or something it, like that? It's, Char it's Charles D. D, D, D Gross. Yeah, it's Char Charles D. Gross's channel. But if they put in two on the aisle, Rachel Bloom, it will come up immediately. So thank you, Leslie. Thank you for your question. Thank you for. I'm sorry for, you know, I, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. It's and I okay. totally misunderstood what I was doing. So I actually wrote five questions in one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's this is the show. And thank you, Don, <laughs> for being in the neighborhood again. Good health to you. I hope everything is well. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Best thank to you. everybody. Stay well. I'll give my best. Take care. My Thank you for laughing, Joyce, before. I love it when you laugh at my stuff. <laughs> Take stuff. care. Don, say Take hi. Care. If you're in touch with any of the, the folks in our writers group, um, like Shan or, or I'm unfortunately forgetting names, but, you know, please, Travis and, and, and those people, say hi to them. Wendy. Yeah. 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 Wendy really is the only one I keep in touch with. But who knows? Things happen. I will. I'll send your best. Bye bye. Bye bye. And Leslie, we'll see you soon. So okay. Gonna, you might have to remove your, oh, you're gone. Okay. So back to Dave's Gone By here on this Saturday, <laughs> February 3rd. I think we're going to, we're going to table <laughs> the Today Yesterday quiz for a couple of years. <laughs> well, that was good. It's just like. Oh, no, Dave, don't do that. Oh, well, she's still there. I thought. <laughs> you never know who's listening. <laughs> it's the voice of God. <laughs> Oh my God! Um, I think I think from now on, no, Leslie, we we have to reconnoiter before we do this thing to make sure you. That's fine. Back. You're absolutely right. I can't get off here. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Oh, I see. I have to go back on before I Leslie can go can't off. Leslie can't get off, okay. and she doesn't know what she's doing wrong. That that's the story of my sex life. But <laughs> yes, I I know. I was okay. I found it. Bye. <laughs> I, 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 she's, she's, there's no video of her. There's nothing I'll here. Help you. I'll help you. Show me the participants. What a participant. Oh, participants. We got one. Oh, I think she's gone. Leslie, are you gone? Okay, she's gone. Okay. Because <laughs> there's no participants, just you. Yeah, she, 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 she figured out a way to. <laughs> David, it's like us when you get an assignment wrong. Like, there oh. was understanding, but then, you know, you, she went creatively. I liked it. No, no, that, that, that Why not fine. layer questions within questions? And then, you know, it's like the mirror and the mirror. Oh, I, I've had, I've had times where I've given away the answer, actually. Yeah, yeah. I, I, come on. I, I know that. It was a good quiz. I thought it was very nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've been on for yeah. two, okay, two hours yeah. and 44 minutes. Everybody's minute. already turned to wait, wait, don't tell me instead. But anyway, I'm Dave Lefkowitz. That's my darling I and adorable wife, Joyce. Hmm. And we have a, you're just stuck on the Facebook on your phone like this. I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> oh my God. You might have to re reboot your phone. That's your phone. <laughs> oh, gray. Figures. <laughs> Let me see. 
Joyce is, uh, is looking at my telephone and trying to figure out why we can't get me live on Facebook to stop. Uh, oh, I want you to rotate, right? Why <laughs> that's what she said last night. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyway, hmm. We still have our Colorado oh, limerick of the damned to do. And, and that's about it. We might have to do the dictionary thing. Let's see. <laughs> Thanks, uh, I look oh, okay. I'm look, well, it looks okay. Yeah, you're we're in pretty decent shape. Let's, why don't, let's do the dictionary and Oof. close out with that. I well, think that's well, a strong. Um, well, we all, it's literally a quarter to 12 already. So we have the limerick. We haven't even done Bunyan Watch. Oh, so save Bunyan Watch in the dictionary for next time. Right. Yeah. Well, we, I, can, I actually was going to yeah. buy you a dictionary for your birthday. Oh. Like for the show, but I couldn't find, I found some at school, but I wanted like a, they weren't robust enough for you to have all the words you need. That's true. I need, I yeah. need the Oxford, un yeah, you need like a, yeah. an encyclopedia of dictionary words. Next week, we'll do, if we, we haven't had the guest mm -hmm. and the quiz, we wouldn't have had time for a dictionary. Did she have the monkey? No. She, I was so disappointed. She showed it momentarily. Aww. She had it next Why? to her. Why did she not? Is I it don't like know. some, some like performer thing? You I know, know? And, and Rabbi Saul wasn't going to be like, just just put the monkey on her hand, yeah, please, and use it. Yeah. I was like, but she, yeah. yeah. Nice. Would, would have been nice. But anyway, she was, she was delightful. We're talking about Nina Conti, whom, who was a guest in the neighborhood earlier on this program, talking to Rabbi Saul Solomon. If you missed it, remember that we archive all our shows. So in a day or two, this episode will be not only archived on Facebook. Especially the quiz. Yeah, yeah. We, we, that might get, <laughs> that might accidentally get snipped. <laughs> In, in it Abbey. Fun. It seemed very, it seemed like yeah. everyone was having a lot of fun. It was fine. Um, yeah, fun. But also on davesgoneby.com, our official website. So we save the show, and then if you miss part of it or want to rewatch part of it, um, just go to davesgoneby.com, click on the show. We'll also snip the uh, Nina Conti interview with Rabbi Saul as its own separate file, so you can just watch the interview if you want that. That's both at davesgoneby.com and also archive.org, a not-for-profit website that archives literature and music and art and culture from, you know, anything that's public domain or they have permission to put on there is there for you to watch whenever. It's a, it's a great, great website, and we're proud to have our own channel on archive.org. It's the Dave's Gone By channel. Now, if you're a person who's on the go, this is the international symbol for on the go, and you don't have the time or the wherewithal to sit and look at my face for three hours, and you just want the audio, you want to listen to the show in your car or at the gym on a train, you might want to go to castbox.fm and download the show as a pure podcast. You know, you can get it as an MP3 off davesgoneby.com or wherever, but castbox.fm is somehow uh, set up to be a podcast platform. And there you can get every show we've ever done, um, audio only. So this week's show will be there, but it'll be the audio only, and we'll post that in a day or two. But so many ways to, I literally, wow, I launched a gob of spit that has hit the screen right here. Right there. Uh, oh, you can still see it on my finger, too. Ew! And look, I wonder if you saw it. i got to roll this back and see if it, you see it coming out of my mouth. But... All the ways to see this program, Dave's Gone By. And again, we're delighted that Nina Conti, who is going to be doing her show, The Dating Game. Is it, is it what it was? The Dating or The Dating Show? The Dating Show, excuse me. Uh, and that is going to start on Valentine's Day, February 14th, and run through March 2nd at the Soho uh, Playhouse on Van Damme Street, which, as, as the rabbi said, it's Downtown can be really confusing. If you just take the E train to Spring Street, it's one block away. That is really the easiest way to get to it, to see the dating show. And, and absolutely, after this program's over, if your eyeballs haven't popped and your ears haven't melted, go Googling or, or YouTubing Nina Conti and see what she does on stage. She really is hilarious. Um, okay, so I want to thank Rabbi Saul Solomon. Go to shalomdammit.com to watch his stage show, to watch the episodes of his very, very funny TV show that he did for Long Island Cable all those years ago, shalomdammit.com. Let us also thank David Sheward, Leslie Hope and Blake, Vicky Quaddy, and Don Pearl. 
And these are all friends of the neighborhood. These are people who have been on this program in months or years past, and we keep tabs on them. We want to let you know what they're up to. What are they doing now, these friends of ours? So, for example, today, or actually this evening at 7.30, you can go see the legendary Judy Collins. She is going to be at the Museum of Modern Art in Manhattan. Why? I, I didn't even know she did this. In 1974, she co-directed a movie called Antonia, A Portrait of a Woman, and it was actually Oscar-nominated. So, they're going to be doing a special screening of the movie at MoMA uh, tonight at 7.30, be there, because Judy Collins will be there. I'm sure she'll, she'll introduce the film or they'll ask her some questions. That is today, February 3rd, right there in Manhattan at the Museum of Modern Art. Uh, writing comedy is an art. And if you want some pointers on how to do that, Steve Kaplan's Comedy Intensive starts today. It's an interactive online workshop, and you can find out more at kaplancomedy.com. They meet like once a week. Um, you can be there with it live or, or watch, you know, they record everything. So if you can't be there for a session, you can still see it. Uh, check it out, kaplancomedy.com. On Sunday, tomorrow evening, Marcus Goldhaber will be holding court at room 623 in Harlem. That's over on 119th Street in the upper part of Manhattan there. And then also tomorrow, this is way cool, set your radios to WFUV-FM in New York or, or find them online at WFUV.org because our friend Christine Lavin will be sitting in for the weekly show Sunday Supper. The, the usual DJ can't be there. So Christine Lavin is going to take the mic, play the songs that she wants to play. That is from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time on WFUV tomorrow afternoon. And then, uh, and hey, might as well, there's no football tomorrow. We're waiting a week till the Super Bowl. Uh, let's see, J.O. Sanders is on Broadway in Pearly Victorious. You have just this weekend to catch it. So matinee today, evening show tonight, and then tomorrow afternoon, and it's done. And it's gotten really good reviews. Is at the Music Box Theater. Stuart Zagnett is on Broadway in the Bruce Sussman Barry Manilow musical Harmony. He is he has a small roles in the ensemble, and he's also understudying the lead role played by Ch Chip Zion. I don't know if, if Zion's gonna you know suddenly not feel well for an afternoon and give um, give him a shot. I don't know. I don't know. Is that the kind of person he is? Well, sometimes you do that if there's a, a no name person and the shows run a long time, and the star's like, oh, let's give the kid a shot. But everybody knows who Stu Zagnick is, so I don't know if That's he needs. Nice. Yeah. Well, it's nice if you do that. That's very good to, Yeah, I don't know, but, but maybe, maybe Stu Zagnick will be on in the lead, or maybe he'll be in the ensemble of Harmony at the Ethel Barrymore Theater. Again, you have three more chances to catch it before it closes on Broadway. Eric Comstock and Barbara Fasano, they are, of course, back at Bird... Whoa, 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 I'm, I, where am I? Uh, no, yes, they're at Birdland on Tuesday evenings at 5.30 in the evening, every Tuesday. So go see them this Tuesday and every Tuesday after that. Birdland is over on West 44th Street. Tom Chapin and family, Tom the brother of Harry, uh, will be doing a show called Harry Chapin's Greatest Stories Live. And that is at the Patchogue Theater on February 9th. So towards the end of the week. Playing now through the middle of February, the Broadway, sorry, the off-Broadway musical The Connector, written with, with a score by Jason Robert Brown. That is being done at Manhattan Class Company's Theater off-Broadway and features our friend Jessica Molaski. And then Hun. <laughs> Alert! Who are, whom do we have an alert for? Yes, it's Austin. Austin Pendleton. He is directing 
uh, that, that uh, off-Broadway revival of Tennessee Williams' Night of the Iguana that is happening from now till almost the end of February. It feels like it's been going on forever. Uh, and Daphne Rubin Vega, our other friend of the neighborhood, is in there too. That is off-Broadway at the Signature Theater over on West 42nd Street over by like 10th Avenue. It's uh, Austin Pendleton directing Daphne Rubin Vega in The Night of the Iguana. On Broadway, uh, Lilius White is in Hades Town. Alan Menken's music is heard in Aladdin. And of course, Alan Menken's music is heard off Broadway in the revival of Little Shop of Horrors. Seth Bissenhirsch's talent show happens on Tuesday night, Seth's talent showcase at Don't Tell Mama. Vince Giordano and the Nighthawks hold court Monday evenings for two shows at Birdland. And of course, every Monday night at Birdland, it's Jim Caruso's cast party. Get your tickets at birdlandjazz.com. Our great friend of the neighborhood, Evan Seplo, is the founder and editor of stagebuddy.com. And um, yeah, and I think, my friends, those are the friends of, oh, and, and give a shout out to David Kenny. I think he's celebrating a radio anniversary. Dave Kenny hosts a show called Everything Old is New Again on WBAI Radio in New York. It's one of the longest shows on there. Uh, longest running shows on there, sorry. And he plays theater music, uh, Tim Pan Alley greatest hits of, of the American musical songbook kind of thing. Mix, it, it's pretty cool. And it's been running on WBAI Sunday nights for many, many years and still is. So a shout out to David Kenny and all the friends of the neighborhood. You know, it's always so, so sad when we have to go from beautiful, artistic, uh, classical music like that and then transition into um, the Colorado Limerick. Make it loud, yeah. No Limerick today. I beg your pardon. <laughs> we try and have a Limerick on every show. The Colorado Limerick of the Damned. Says every marching college student in America. Yeah. I was during the quiz. like AI rap, basically. <laughs> All right. So our Colorado Limerick of the Damned, Joyce and I lived in northern Colorado for about 13 years. And so for no good reason, while I was there, I took it into my brain to write poems about all the different places in Colorado. But, but Colorado is so beautiful. Did I write these majestic poems about the Rocky Mountains, about Estes Park, about just the beauty, the glory of the big sky country. No, no. Old Abe, of course, wrote horrible, filthy, risque, disgusting limerick poems What's about the all these different places. So today, and this was a tough one, today we go to Edwards, Colorado. Edwards, Colorado. Believe me, it was not easy. Because some of these, Vail, you know, everything rhymes with Vail. Greeley wasn't that hard. Um, what, what were some other fairly... You know, Estes Park, but it reminds of Ark. Easy. Edwards, not easy at all. But we have some There's information. A lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let me play the theme. And then Joyce will tell us about Edwards, Colorado. And then to ruin your afternoon, I will read the Colorado limerick of the day. A limerick is a comic verse of five lines in which lines one, two, and five would end with words that rhyme. 
And likewise, verses three and four also end with words that rhyme. So this is a limerick. Yeah, speaking of Christine Lavin, that's her chiming in with Colorado there. So yeah, um, our Colorado limerick of damned where we're going to Edwards. Joyce, can you tell us something about Edwards? Uh, it would have a really illustrious history. Uh -oh. There was the post office there mm. since 1883, and the town was actually named for Melvin Edwards. Melvin Edwards, not Melvin G. Mintz, no. but Melvin, the, our The beautiful. population's increasing. It increased from 2000 to 2010, about 25%, and mm -hmm. another 10% from 10 to 20, because I believe yeah. it is Four miles to Beaver Creek, and it is six miles to Vail. Oh no! Not, wait, uh, and, no, no close four, enough. Six, four miles to Beaver Creek, and about fourteen miles to Vail. So no you big can game. ski, but yeah. you don't have to pay Vail. Vail is very expensive. It's like a satellite town to Vail. Huh. Well, that's pretty yeah. cool. It's it's called a micropolitan city. It's mm -hmm. won awards for being what they call a hidden oh, okay. gem. Metropolitan is anything over ten thousand, so it should be metropolitan, right? Well, yeah, this has a population of 11,000 people, mm -hmm. so that's there's more than micro. It's, yeah. it's macro or metro, as you say. It looks pretty. And supposedly very artsy city, but of course, like every other place in Colorado, they've got boating down the Eagle River, fly fishing, wilderness walks. It's Colorado. It even has a river walk with a movie theater, craft breweries, and a farmer's it's market. It's Edwards rated top town for rich young singles. Woohoo! Well, that would never have been me anyway, so there you go. Um, do you, and this is, this is apparently the official motto of Edwards, Colorado. It's, quote, where the locals live. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that every place? Yes. <laughs> David, wouldn't that be like any Like a town? Guatemalan hut. Any place. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, like New York City, this is where the locals, locals live. live. It, it or makes... it could be like Detroit, this is where the, you know, Chicago. No, is. no, uh, yeah. Any neighborhood, yeah. It is, it's about a two hours drive west of Denver, oh. in the heart of Vail Valley, mm -hmm. but it's Edwards, and somehow I've, I've managed in a meager way to come up with a really I'm risque poem. Okay. Not risque, it's, just, it's more disgusting than anything right. else. Our Colorado Limerick of the, <laughs> of the damned. <clears throat> A group of unkempt and ill-bred nerds. Ooh, sorry about that. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. I'm, gonna, I'm just throwing out. A group of unkempt and ill-bred nerds were eating Doritos in Edwards. <laughs> they gorged on the snack, but then but then cried a lack. As as each filled the toilet with red turds. Huh? Huh? Please send your comments, opinions, and, and everything else to Dave's Gone By at AOL.com. Dave, like my name, Dave's Gone By at AOL.com. I can't reply to everything, but I do try and read every letter I get, no matter how angry and insulting. Uh, you can also message me right on Facebook or post under the episodes on Facebook, too, if you want everybody to read your stuff. But I love hearing from you. I'll try and give you a thumbs up or a, a thank you if I can. What's your time? But, um... Three hours. And... Yeah, and counting, but we're finishing the show. Oh. So, yeah, we're, we're pretty much done here. Uh, but I want to remind you also that we have a Twitter feed, Radio Dave 2. Uh, we have our Instagram page, David.Lefkowitz. All the... All, it's just all ways of being reminded that the show is on or who the guest is going to be. Plus, in a separate corner of my universe, we have the, um, the website davelefkowitz.org. This is different. This is not where the show is. This is where I have my writing. This is where you can read my one-act or full-length plays. You can read my song lyrics. The interviews that I've done, like just, just this week, uh, they published the um, edition of Long Island Woman magazine, which comes out every two months. And I did an interview with, oh my God, who the hell was it? I'm already forgetting her name. Oh, shame on me, it's a music person. 
Well, if you're on Long Island and you, and you walk around a bagel shop, pick up Long Island woman. She's on the cover. And whoever the interview was with, <laughs> you, you, it's by me. Uh, and and um, we'll pop that on to DaveLefkowitz.org also. Like uh, a few months ago, I interviewed comedian Maria Bamford, Bamford uh, yes. for Long Island Woman. I think I put that up on the site. If I didn't, I need to. But anyway, that's the place to read my stuff. DaveLefkowitz.org. Do check that out. Well, um, let's see. We've done, we've done what we've done today. We had Grilly Times. We had God Help Us Our Today. Yesterday, trivia quiz, our Colorado Limerick of the Damned, and, of course, Rabbi Saul chatting with actress and comedian Nina Conti. I think we've, we've done what we needed to do. Uh, do we want to talk about anything else? Still waiting for my pants. I'll pick them up at some point. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, <I> <laughs> Did I tell the story last time? Or just we, I think we you just, should hold it till the next I'll time. I'll hold it till that's what she said. That's a good lead-in. Yeah, because you can actually fetch them and then talk about the full arc of the story. You're right. You're yeah. right. So, and and I don't want to give a canine to her when I tell the story. <laughs> yeah, no. What else? What else? Do we do we want to? Uh, I mentioned that we have a, co- a couple of minutes before we have to go. Go. Then you show. We haven't done sock of wonder. I, you I end with that. You could you could. Why I, don't we, like yeah. remember the the uh, the. Spanish celebrity would do like all the pr- pronostication stuff. You should predict with the sock, like predict like horoscopes. You know, you could do like that kind of stuff. Whoa! You Let could me do see horoscopes for the sock. Well, here's the deal. We found this. This was when Joyce and I visited New York. We stayed in a small hotel on Midtown's East Side. It was a lovely hotel and and clean and nice. Except <laughs> when we walked in there, there was somebody's sock on the floor. <laughs> That night, we threw the sock away in the hotel's, you know, in the room's Not garbage can. Not the incinerator, can. but the, the garbage in yeah. the room. It wasn't like we, you know, we, yeah. Uh, yeah. We put it on top of the garbage. And then the maid, or the cleaning person, when we came back after the hotel was cleaned, had taken the sock out of the garbage <laughs> and put it back on, like, the bed. And I was like, this is not my sock. It's not Joyce's sock. It is obviously a sock of wonder. It, it is something special. It has nine lives or, or 199 lives like a cat. So we, we've treated this as a special sacred object. And since we've had it, it has attracted other sock strange phenomena. <laughs> Three different socks of mine yeah. have had holes in them. Yes. Also, the car now has a sock. We found one of my extraneous socks in the car. Right. I, I told her, them, Joyce said it's one of her socks. Don't mention the girls I've had. Anyway, yeah, uh, and and then and then we found an orphan sock of, of in the house. Yes. Somehow the sock of wonder is both attracting and repelling. It's a magnet and it's repul- repulsing. If if you get on the sock's good side, you know it is drawn to us. Mm-hmm. Bad side, it gets a hole in it. And you it, have it to get some up. good like good song chord, like oh, like sock of wonder, oh, you know, like. Are there any songs about, you know, if, if there are songs about bunions, there are probably songs about socks. Sock. By the way, we'll table bunion watch yeah. until next time. But Maybe uh, play these boots are made for walking. He could get into that. That's a yeah. song for him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's a shame the Carol Burnett show is no longer, I, David Schubert would say oh, this too. Because I would, I would get Christopher Walken as the special guest and have him sing and dance to These Boots Are Made for Walking. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a great gimmick? A that, Saturday, the Saturday Night Live. Yeah, or, or the Muppet. That'd be perfect That'd be for the Muppet awesome. show. Yeah. But I did see Elmo. He did pre- it was very bad. He had a very he was you know like He was angry. I think they were trying to show like when, when children get a sibling and they're jealous and then you know they want or you know, they want attention or something. But Elmo, he said yeah. some things. So he, it's a rock! No, he was he was it yeah, was, he was lit. It was not good. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, That's why it became a meme. People were shocked to see <laughs> Elmo yeah, really yeah, losing really his lost it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my God. Anyway, so we have a sock of wonder. We're not sure. You know, he, he is our mascot. He is beloved. We just you know, don't know do what the, to do. The... Oh, You yeah. should sign off with this. It's yes. sock. We know, we, so we watched the thing with William Shatner. We know, like, Masons and all groups have secret handshakes. Yeah. But we have this sock of wonder handshake. Sock, sock. of wonder. Yeah. Sock. But you named him. I don't know how you knew his name. It was, how did you learn his name? He, he, he's such a sock of wonder. He's notorious. <laughs> to me in a fibrous and beautiful fashion 
that, uh, yeah, yeah. I love it. Ha. <sighs> I'm Dave Lefkowitz. That's my wonderful wife, Joyce. You have been watching the 929th episode of this program. We expect to be back next Saturday. I, I believe that would be February 10th. Quiz? Oh, hell no. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Ain't no quiz next. Unless we have a guest. I don't know who or if we'll even have a guest. If the guest wants to participate in a quiz, well, we'll do one. Well, let's just say you're not going to have Elmo. No, no, not not. Absolutely not going to have alcohol. We might have potato. This is a brand new. You just old. said we might not have alcohol. That's how we translated that, what you said. Oh. Yes. Hello, potato. I got this from eBay. Um, this was a potato that just came this week. We, we Joyce, Joyce immediately she's like, oh, he's got a lump on his face. It's like, come on, he's a potato. He's not going to be even. So he's, yeah, he has a little bit of acromegaly uh, occurring here, but his eyes are adorable. He is a, he was even when he was in the packet. You said, oh, he's got hard, his eyes are sharp. No, his eyes were sticking out. You know, they, yeah, but they're, they're fuzzy. They're, so, they're beautiful. His nose is beautiful. He's got a great smile. His buttons are all Maybe really he tight. Maybe get blessed by the, the um, sock by of the wonder. Sock of, sock of wonder. Sock. Is, is there a blessing for the czar? No, there's no blessing. Is there a blessing <laughs> for, for potato? Potato, do, do you feel any different now that you have been blessed by sock? Let me look. What? He's elevating. Whoa. He's, he, no, go towards the light, no, Potato. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. He's light. going to our ring light, and that will, <laughs> that will make him way too crisp. He yeah. can jump through if we move. Stand, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think I think that's <laughs> that's an appropriate end if anything is to this episode of Dave's Gone By. We'll see you next Saturday, February tenth, for the nine hundred and thirtieth. Oh, I get the wow. next numbers off. Yeah. Episode of Dave's Gone By. Yeah. You're moving up. Oh, the number chain. Yeah. By me, Dave Lefkowitz, co-hosting in a way by my darling and adorable wife Joyce, and hopefully. I, well, there I am using that word incorrectly again. Well, Why, I hope, with all of you folks watching, and please tell your friends about the show. Have them go to davesgoneby.com to join us here in the neighborhood. Happy post Groundhog Day and pre Valentine's Day and gone a bye. Dave's gone by. Dave's gone by. Take all the